Rival House Network. What's up, gang? Zach and Aaron are back with Cinema Enema. Fuck yes. Keeping our promise that we're going to be back to doing these once a month, at least uh, coming off the little bit of a lull we had during the holidays where we were coming at your face with all the commentaries we were doing for the holidays, right? We are shooting them fucking nuts right at your face. At the top of the hour? Your face is all fucking filled with narcummies. Ah, man. Yeah, I'm excited because I hope and I think that Aaron hated the fuck out of this movie. We're going to find out. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. His, his being sexual there is just uh, foreshadowing what we're going to be talking about with this flick, uh, the top of the hour. But I want to say at the top of the show here that Zach and I, really quick, are now on Patreon. If you guys have been looking for a way uh, to support the channel in any way, I mean, anybody that's bought a shirt, we thank you guys. That's awesome. You guys can buy merchandise. Uh, you guys listening is, is all we can really expect. And as long as you guys are doing that, we're not going to complain. We're super stoked that you guys stick around with us week after week. But fuck yes. In fact, we hope you don't <laughs> buy anything. That way we have less work to do. But for anybody that maybe wanted a little bit extra content, we are now on Patreon where we have uh, various little perks in there um, and various little tiers. But basically, Zach and I are going to be doing a bonus exclusive commentary uh, that's only going to be for uh, patrons, uh, certain patrons. And then also patrons are going to have the ability to join in on a live commentary commentary i can't fucking talk which is going to be one of the normal shows that we do throughout the month if that makes sense right they're gonna be able to type in the the fucking chats yeah and you guys are gonna be able to help dictate how that conversation goes so that's the plan uh going forward and that's always going to change i mean if if you guys have suggestions or you know if we feel obviously if we're getting the support that uh warrants it we'll be able to add more content but you know zach and i are just two guys so we want to be able to give something for anybody that wants to support a little more. Um, yeah. Give us some ideas if you're like, hey, these tiers, uh, you got game like Coleco. Fucking let us know some better shit we can give you guys. Yeah. Like the nuts. Zach and I are only two guys. We want to give you as much as we can. Obviously, if the support were to start rolling in over time, man, we can get more manpower. We can we can give you guys more. But yeah, so that's that when I say live commentary, I want to emphasize what I mean by that. So we we typically do four normal uh, BTM commentaries a month, once a week. Uh, they they drop on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to start doing one of those live early. Right. And that episode, obviously, with the people that have access, will be able to join us when we're uh, going to be going live and be a part of that whole experience. And then it'll still be going up for everybody else per a normal episode on Wednesday as normal. Uh, and also, of course, I think it's a given when it comes to Patreon and stuff like that. You guys will get early access. Um, and I, I think the standard is what? Three days, Zach? Is that established like three days early? Hell yeah. A week early. We can do it however we want. We just launched the thing. So we're going to call it right now. We're going to say three days early. How about that? And that's just sort of a normal, normal standard perk there. But anyway, let us know what you guys think about that. Criticism accepted. But we're going to go on and get on with the show. And we're going to do news bits. And once again... Uh, hopefully you guys are uh, privy to cinema enema by now. Uh, like I said, because we were gone for a couple of months uh, in, in the winter, I'll go ahead and do it again, but I'll say that this show is different than the commentaries. Uh, this is an opportunity for Zach and I to discuss current events, news and stuff in the movie world at the, at the top half. And then at the bottom half, we get into a film and we alternate each show is a choice by Zach or a choice by myself. Uh, that ideally the other person has never seen before, right? So mm -hmm. they watch it in their own time and they come to the show prepared with <laughs> their opinions on it. And Zach, I mean, you guys will see a theme in Zach's choices. He likes to try and, and bring a little shock factor to me. I think he knows the kind of movies that get something out of me or, or, or maybe he likes to get a rise if you guys haven't already caught on to that. So uh, I don't That's know. That's not my exclusive mission statement. Though. Not as exclusive MO, but there's a theme 
<laughs> interwoven in there. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get into that. First thing, let's talk about news, though. Uh, so there's a lot that's been going on. We, we dropped our episode a month ago. So, you know, we do these once a month. So it's a lot of shit tends to accumulate in the press. By the way, that's one thing I would love to do if we can get more manpower and, you know, maybe get the support. I would like to do cinema anime even more. I really would. I wish we could do this at some point, bump it up to twice a week. But like I said, it starts cutting into the commentaries and that's that's kind of our main thing. But like I said, uh, in, in a dream world, that's what we would do. Uh, so I have some notes prepared here, different news bits. The first thing I want to talk about is Lee Whannell. Uh, so he just came out with his Invisible Man reboot, remake. I don't know what you want to call it. They've had a million Hollow Mans and rem- uh, Invisible Mans out there. Hollow Man is the tits. Kevin Bacon's cock in full fucking heat vision. But this uh, movie apparently is getting a lot of really good reviews. Now, it is a Blumhouse movie. Blumhouse has been kind of hit or miss. I don't really go into Blum. It's not a sure thing. If I see Blumhouse's name on it, I'm like, ah, yeah, you know, (laughs) because they've done some shit. What's that movie they just put out with Finn Wolfhard because he's in everything and it looks terrible. Finn Wolfcock. Yeah. But anyway, have you seen trailers for that Invisible Man or heard anything about it? I've seen one trailer and uh, I saw the poster. The poster looks like a fucking dookie. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know how it goes. There's there's nothing in the theaters, right? And and some of us... I did like Lee Whannell's last movie. Well, Upgrade? Yeah. So I haven't seen Upgrade yet. Yeah, Lee Whannell, for those that don't know, he was the writer of Saw, Dead Silence, Insidious 1 and 2. So he was a collaborator with James Wan. He's kind of... He's, he's, he's more hits than misses. Well, his directorial debut was Insidious 3. I didn't see that. And then his second flick, like you said, was Upgrade. And now he's got Invisible Man, so... Um, I mean, as far as what he's written, I like the first Saw. I mean, I'll say that till I die. I mean, I, I can't sit there and lie. I mean, eventually Saw got so fucking played out. But the fact of the matter is, is when the first Saw came out and it wasn't a franchise or it wasn't expected to be a franchise. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of original and it was cool. We should do a fucking uh, commentary exploitation month of all the Saw movies. We'd be fucking wanting to kill ourselves. We'd be begging for fucking Jigsaw to come put us in one of those traps. I bet. Dead Silence I saw, and that was just kind of okay. <laughs> that wasn't very... Yeah, a lot of people love that movie, but uh, I always thought it was, you know, kind of, uh, it fell flat. And I remember uh, rather liking the first Insidious okay, and I saw Insidious 2, and I, I thought it wasn't as good, but it was passable. If I, But I don't remember them too well, to be honest with you. I never saw Insidious 3. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I think you... And didn't Max say Upgrade was, was good too? I should watch Upgrade, because mm-hmm. I... It sounds like the kind of flick I like. Uh, but anyway, Invisible Man, there's not a lot in theaters. You start grasping for shit uh, when you get some kind of horror flick that at least is getting some kind of reviews that are positive. So, I mean, what did I see in theaters last time? I, I end up having to go to the movie theaters every couple of weeks or so socially, and you kind of end up ha- having to settle. So, I mean, I'll go see Invisible Man. Why not? Mm. Um, speaking of Saw, side note, what is your? I don't. I never got your opinion on the whole spiral of book. The book from the book of Saw with Chris Rock and Sam Jackson. I don't know what the fuck to think of that. I didn't watch the trailer. I'm. Uh, you know. I'm just gonna. When it comes out, I'll watch it. I'll see what it is. Isn't that weird though? It seemed like mm-hmm. an April Fool's post when they first announced that back in the day. Yeah. Why would they change it, the title? Like uh, that goes against their whole mission statement. Usually, it's like, oh, it's been so long since we put one out. We want to fucking call it Saw again because uh, people will think it's a reboot. Well, That's I why think they it, called it Jigsaw instead of Saw Eight or whatever. I think it kind of is though. I mean, like for I imagine if Spiral from the Book of Saw was a hit, it would go for being called Spiral, right? And I think they just have to put that subtitle from the Book of Saw to reassure everybody hey this is this is a saw movie but once it's it'll just be uh spiral two and three they'll still drop they'll they'll be like they know no it's exactly what i'm trying to say you know they they have to put that uh you know reassurance they have to let people know hey look this is a saw movie for marketing purposes but if it's a hit it's standing on its own two legs at that point and they'll drop it it'll be spiral two three like you said um but uh i don't know i'm morbidly curious I, I don't like Chris Rock movies. He's a funny comedian, but has he a movie that he starred in? Has he ever been in a movie that he starred in that was good? He puts out fucking consistent classic after class. You ever see fucking uh, Down to Earth? Yeah, that where he plays, he possesses the white man or whatever, or vice versa. Greatest film ever made. Yeah. How he didn't win a fucking Oscar for that, I'll never know. 
He was in uh, New Jack City. He he's he's been in a couple flicks in his early days where he was a support guy, and the overall flicks are good or, or okay. But the movies that he starred in since he's been a big ace player, just they're not very fucking good. It's kind of like Martin Lawrence. I never saw New Jack City, but I saw the porno parody Big Fat Titty. Okay, that was a good one. I think you could have played with the the Jack too and kept that in the title and still had it be perverted. But anyway, yeah, I, yeah, I think that comes out uh, May fifteenth. So I'll probably go see it. Like I said, I'm curious and there's not a whole lot to pick from. Uh, another thing, speaking of Blumhouse, I'm not sure if the spiral movies Blumhouse, but why is his name Blum? Fuck that. Change that shit. Bloom sounds better. Yeah, it does. But uh, going back to the Lee one L thing and the whole connection with the visible man Blumhouse Blumhouse also just dropped the Candyman remake trailer uh, and it's Jordan Peele produced. So, uh, Zach and I had the idea that him and I are going to actually, because we've never seen the trailer yet, we're going to probably do a commentary, a short reaction to that at the end of this. Do you want to do it at the end of this after the credits? Oh, we can, baby. Or would you rather be a separate little video that we just put out at the same time? We could just fucking do it right now if you want. You want to do it right now? We can. I think we did that on like episode two or something for some. Okay, so let's go ahead and and pull it up. We's going to. It's going to be donk. Now, I remember... Tony Todd, everybody was like, oh, get Tony Todd to play him. Tony Todd. Then they announced that Tony Todd had been contacted and everybody just assumed he was playing Candyman. But I, I haven't seen the trailer yet. But just from the blurbs and shit I've read online, it doesn't sound like he's playing Candyman. So is this like a glorified cameo? Is he playing bum number two at Cabrini Green? I don't know. Uh, which one do you want to watch? Candyman trailer number one, 2020 movie clips, trailers. What's the. Oh, okay. Uh, are you on Joe Blow? I don't see Joe Blow. Well, I'm going to put it in the box for you. I'm going to put it in the, the chat real quick. Let's just watch this one. So we'll get this queued up and we will do a reaction to it. You know what? It, it, the first Candyman, I guess it's a classic, but it's kind of a flawed classic because I've, I can't say I've ever loved the movie. It's too slow for me. Yeah. Part of me, part of me has this feeling like if I haven't seen it in a while, I feel like I like it. I remember I liked that movie. I think it's just because it's been ingrained in my life for 20 fucking five years or whatever. And I've seen it so many times that I've convinced myself that nostalgia equals quality. It's not, it's not a bad movie by any stretch. It's just, I don't think it's amazing. I don't know if it warranted a couple of sequels and a remake or actually maybe it does warrant a remake. Cause maybe the remake will do it better. I don't know. I'm all ready when you are, you are. Okay. So guys, we're watching the Candyman trailer 2020. And it's the one that Joe Blow uh, posted. So if you guys want to follow along, we're, we're on Joe Blow. But Zach, you and I are going to go in three, two, one, play. Candyman. The urban legend is if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror. So are, 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 is she playing Virginia Madsen's character? Oh, there's fucking ads. In this. No, there's not. My bad. Okay. So they're, I wonder how true they're sticking to the original or if they're just taking liberties. I mean, you could honestly kind of do your own story. I, I wouldn't be pissed if they, you know, didn't follow the original movie because the original the original movie itself, you know, that that Clyde Barker novella. It's a cool story. It's a cool campfire tale. It's basically just a take on the whole Bloody Mary thing. Right. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. But they never made a Bloody Mary movie. I wonder why they kind of did. Candyman. They probably didn't because it's like, oh, it's like Candyman. You know, Bloody Mary's older, but then when somebody's probably pitched a Bloody Mary movie, they're like, we can't do that. That's fucking Candyman. I'm like, well, Candyman's Bloody Mary. Well, they beat you to it. Yeah, they need to make a Bloody Mary where she's like fucking like on a rag and she's just like fucking bleeding all over these fucking kids. That'd be donk. <laughs> so they've made the uh, main protagonist a man in this one. Isn't that weird in these woke times? You would have thought they would have kept it a woman because that was... Fucking women, they're so fucking years ago. No one cares about women anymore. It's all about the man, baby. The fucking man. A woman is just the leftovers from fucking, what's his name's rib bone or whatever. <laughs> Okay, getting biblical on us. They don't even matter. Now I heard. Uh, I heard. Does Virginia Madison have a cameo in this? Or maybe we even saw her. She looks old, and I don't re remember her. Oh yeah. Uh, see, I didn't even know they even filmed anything for this movie. I thought it was just being talked about. And then all of a sudden, there's a trailer out. Yeah, I mean that's the way they do it. It feels like just yesterday they were chatting about it. Okay, wait. Are they gonna show Candyman? Maybe. Oh, I just I just saw somebody. Dude, I don't know why you don't get Tony Todd. Tony Todd is actually a really good actor. He's one of those guys that's 
you know, found his clout in genre shit. But he's been in a lot of big movies in like small parts, part of big productions and stuff. And Candyman could be old as fuck. That's not Candyman's voice. That's not Tony Todd's voice. He's got a fucking deep voice. It could be. I don't know. No, Tony Todd's voice is. But that wasn't the same deep voice. Hey, who would. Maybe they hire someone to play his uh, different voice. Who would win in a fight? Uh, Candyman or I Know What You Did Last Summer? Fuck it, dude. I know what you did last summer is one of those movies that every I always remember. Like, man, maybe, uh, maybe it's not as bad. Uh, and I go back and watch it, and I watch it, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is happening right now. Like, the story makes no sense. Yeah, it's it's a shitty it's a shitty movie. Uh, the trailer was a thing. I mean, that trailer we just watched it looks fine. I mean, I might go see it. I I don't I don't think they're really gonna do. I don't know if they can do any harm to it. Like I said, Candyman's they can make a shittier movie. They've already proven they can make a shittier movie because they had the sequels to the original Candyman. You ever try to watch? Those are amazing. You ever watch the third one, especially? What a trash fire. Uh, I've watched all of them and I don't remember fucking any of the sequels, which is the worst sin you could commit for a movie. Be forgettable. I'd rather you be notoriously bad, right? I'd honestly take, a latter day Rob Zombie movie where it's just so fucking terrible where you're at least going to talk about it on the next podcast or something that, you know, speaking of what we do, but yeah, it, those Candyman sequels are, are forgettable. Um, anyway, I was going to say something. Speaking of, I don't even see Candyman listed in the cast. What's his uh, real name? Well, well, he would be called Candyman in the cast. He only, he was only ever referred to as Candyman in the movie. He never had a, unless they said it in the sequels, because I don't fucking remember, but in the first movie, he never had a name established. They don't got him listed. Yeah. And they didn't show him in the trailer. Fuck boys. So who knows? Uh, who knows how much they'll really show. Uh, but anyway, speaking of that, like I said, I think someone like Tony Todd could absolutely play Candyman. I think he kind of looks creepy still as an older guy. Uh, and speaking of older guys that could still play the part. It was also Robert England. He reaffirmed again because it's been back and forth that he most likely is never going to don the Freddy makeup ever again. I know there was some talk a little while ago. At first, he was saying, "Now nah, I'm too old," but then he kind of gave people hope by saying, "You know, maybe I could do one more." But I mean, they, they, I know they'd want a franchise, so they'd probably have to get a younger guy. But it's like I feel like I could do one. And then, uh, then there was talks about the, the 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 franchise getting handed back over to the West Craven Estate and. Uh, they were taking ideas, and uh, I think they were pitching potential idea for, like, series, you know? I don't know if that was, like, on a cable network, and then, like, and also rebooting the film. I think he could still play Freddy one more time. I still think that they should do it and do it one more time and just have it be a definitive be-all, end-all. And then after that, I don't give a fuck. I mean, if, 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 if that movie with Robert England somehow spawns a prequel series and it leads into a prequel and then they want to recast him then... That's a compromise I'd take. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever, fine. I, just give us one more with Robert England. But what he said was, I'm never, I don't think I'm going to play him again, I, you know, just to set realistic expectations there. He's like, I'm not going to do it, but I would voice him in an animated film. Uh, okay. Um, they'll never do that. Yeah, they'll never do it. I mean, does he, does he voice Freddy in, in, in shit like video games and stuff? I don't think they've ever done that. You know what blows me away? Speaking of voice acting with him, you know, when they had Freddy Krueger in that first Mortal Kombat uh, 2011 or whatever, that Mortal Kombat 9, uh, they had the... Jackie Earl Haley. They had the Jackie Earl Haley, the horse shack one. Nobody wanted that. Which, I get it. They had him in there because they had a movie to market, right? Even though it came a little too late. Like, I think the movie had already been out. And it, when I, I remember when that game came out and he was DLC... There must have been something that wasn't quite in sync with the studios. Like they might have been working on him while the movie was still out or something. You know what I mean? I think it came out a little bit before the movie was released. Uh, can you look that up real quick? Because I don't, I don't think so. I could, but I won't because I don't give a shit enough. I think, I think the DLC came out after, and it was a little off-putting. Like, isn't that like a year old? That's so fucking weird. But it was a Warner Brothers. They probably wanted to maybe, maybe they wanted to breathe life into DVD sales or rental, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, but. They wanted to sell it some way. They had a fucking warehouse full of that shit. So I, I don't understand why they would not do the iconic Freddie Robert England. But you know what? I, maybe maybe I, I wonder if they would have gotten the classic Robert England Freddie in the game 
would they have asked him to voice him? And maybe is the reason why they didn't ask him to voice the the Jack or Haley Haley one because that would be sacrilege because that would be weird hearing Robert's voice coming out of that. But it's not like Robert England isn't going to take a paycheck. I mean, I think Robert England's done Call of Duty Zombies. He uh he did uh, he played the Scarecrow in the fuck what is it uh, Injustice games, which were also by the same studio Nether Realm. Mm-hmm. So he he actually worked for Ed Boon and all those guys in a as a different character, which is weird. But anyway, maybe one of these days they'll actually make a straight up horror game. I think Nether Realm should make a horror game. They've they've had so many of those guys at this point as DLC characters throughout the last few games. They could just make a game from the ground up with all of them, you know, and and add some more. And they could probably pay some of these guys if these guys are fucking signing autographs for fifty bucks at conventions. They'll voice your shitty video game, and it would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so there's that. Uh, I got one that yep. I can bring up real quick. Idle Hands Blu-ray coming from Scream Factory. Hell yes. Yeah, I still got to order the Pet Cemetery 2 one. We got to petition them to put our Idle Hands commentary on the Blu-ray. Why not? Is it too late? When does that come out? I don't know. Oh, we should send it to them. We should just... They probably wouldn't give a fuck. They're oh. like, who? <laughs> they won't give a fuck, but you know what? We could still blow up their emails and their contacts. <laughs> Like, hey, look, we, we deserve this. You owe us. Well, I don't think we do it like that. I think we pose as other people. We pose as the fans, right? Like, hey, look, there's this boss ass fucking, you know, bitches that do these awesome commentaries and they have hands down the best uh, idle hands commentary and you guys need to put it in there. We um, could fucking uh, get the director. We kidnap him and force him to call him and tell him. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want to get that pet cemetery, though. I, part of me, I'm not exactly I'm not jumping straight to it just because if I want to get it, I do want the slip cover. I mean, come on, if I'm going to pay for it, I want the slip cover and they guarantee that in production. If you buy it in the first three months of its street date. So I got tons of time to get that. Mm-hmm. I'm not really in a rush. Um, and plus it's always cheaper on Amazon anyway. Once it hits street date, I'm not going to fucking order it straight through shout factory. It's just too much money, but, and I, and I have it digitally now and I still have the old DVD or whatever. Uh, but, I'll get it because it's got some it's got some good commentaries, not commentaries. They didn't get furlong for a commentary, uh, but they have a furlong interview. They got a Clancy Brown interview. Now they might be fucking five minutes long. By the way, I hear those are on YouTube. So it's like they're already ripped to YouTube, I think, or clips or something. But I don't know. There was a, an interview with Eddie Furlong, which I'm kind of sad. I think Josh James, our boy, he shared it with us. Some guy at a convention. Uh, with the YouTube channel, I can't be bothered to, I can't remember what it is, but he, I don't know if it's horror hound or what it was, something recent. He hit him up and he got an interview with the furlong and it was the first time I've seen him video interviewed in fucking forever. And this guy is the first person they got to ask him on camera about his thoughts on that new uh, Terminator flick and, and how they handled his character. And part of me was jealous because I wanted to be that guy, but, uh, he had a real, did you watch that video by the way? No, he had a really good attitude about him. You know what? He was, uh, pretty humble and he was pretty honest like with the answering the questions and he was talking about Terminator 3 he's like man I fucked up <laughs> he's like man I, I was fucking tr- not clean and um, and even talking about what they did with the new Terminator movie he was even saying like I, you know what they paid me I'd love to make fucking more money of course I'd like to do more but he was staying pretty humble and chill about everything so I mean good on him but even though the, the interviewer seemed a little douchey like in the way he was really, really trying to get that headline, mm-hmm. like because he kept asking him the, what seemed like the exact same fucking question about his opinions on what they did to his character in the newest movie a million times, because apparently he didn't get the right answer for his headline. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was one of those things where it's kind of obvious. And I'm like, oh, that's a little cringe. But um, other than that, I, the dude was was fairly classy um, and he didn't look quite as bad as he did in his cameo videos. Like, I mean, he still looks like shit. Don't get me wrong. But those cameo videos, dude, he literally looks like he hadn't slept in a couple of days and he was on a bender. So it's like, oh, yeah. but anyway, always got to have our side notes about uh, the furlong. Uh, uh, other news bit. Uh, we want to speed through these a little bit. Sci fi just ordered a Day of the Dead series. Um, now I read the synopsis on this and I just dropped today, by the way, that news bit that could literally be the original script and just use it. Cause that was originally really long. They could just flush it out, make it a series. Well, I, it was a very brief synopsis. It doesn't tell you much, but it sounds like they're just, they're just using the name only because it sounds nothing like, it sounds nothing like the movie day of the dead at all. If anything, the general synopsis is six friends, 
uh, try and survive the first 24 hours of the outbreak. That already kind of sounds like Night of the Living Dead, right? That's the first 24, you know, but who knows? It sounds like it's going to be something totally unique. They're trying to be edgy. They're trying to capture some of that young market, I guess. They're a little late to the party if they're trying to cash in on Walking Dead shit. But uh, mm -hmm. but I will say this, sci-fi, I think they're really trying to throw their hat in the game because, you know, they're acquiring a property like Day of the Dead on top of the Chucky, right? Because they, they're the ones that are putting out the Chucky series. So, mm -hmm. who knows? Uh, and I heard sci-fi programming has been getting really decent. Like, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I, I, when, I, when I think sci-fi, I still think about old shitty movies, even up to, like, Sharknado. But apparently, their, their, their stuff they put on series is, isn't too shabby. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to Chucky. I'll probably watch uh, Day of the Dead. My only thing is, I don't think sci-fi streams their shit on Hulu. And I, I'm not going to fucking pay for regular cable to watch it. So, there's got to be a way for me to watch this shit online. I don't want to do the Ash vs. Evil Dead thing where I didn't I never I never watched Ash vs. Evil Dead by the week when it was on stars. I, you know, Chucky's going to come out and I'm going to be like, OK, I got to fucking wait uh, till the, it comes out to series and beta move. I mean, what are you going to do? I'd watch it. You're going to watch it week by week. I'd DVR it. I don't have cable, man. You have cable. Yeah, I don't. So. I mean, I probably won't wait for like a streaming or uh, a home release because that's usually like the following year. But at least when the whole series comes out, I can find a way to, um, you know, binge it, you know, unless they get on the ball with Hulu, because I'm all about that. And even then, if it's on Hulu, I'm going to wait for them to stack up, you know, we'll start, you know, they need to have like a sci fi app or something. Anyway, there's that. Uh, speaking of series as well, uh, Lost Boys. Did you see that they they got this whole CW series coming out? No. <sighs> Bullshit. Okay, it's it's. I almost said it's Lost Boys, but with pretty boys. But I guess they were kind of pretty boys in the original movie too, right? <laughs> it was kind of kind of kind of. It was kind of a a movie that appealed to women, right? Oh yeah. Uh, but anyway, for some damn reason, it seems like the characters are all parallel and the story is fairly paralleled. But they decided to change all the characters' names. There's no Michael. There's no Star. It, they they just gave them like Gilbert. I don't know what they they gave them all different names. I I want. Why do they do that? You think sometimes? Because they're fucking smart. Okay. Well enough said. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about before we get into the meat of the show. Macaulay Culkin is back to work. Fucking uh, who gives a shit? Well, I think it's kind of cool. So I don't really give a shit about American Horror Story anymore. I haven't watched it in the last few seasons, but I'm interested. I think it's cool that Macaulay Culk is working again. I know he was, he's was he been promoting that Bunny Ears podcast or whatever he does, and he's just been chilling out like a regular dude. He's just been kind of using his, his status to build a podcast, and he just does it with his friends. I don't think it's anybody famous. You see him all the time. He's hanging out. He goes on YouTube channels. He's been on Cinemasker a time or two. He hangs out with Red Letter Media. He's like a regular on Red Letter Media now, right? Mm. So he's really just like an every Joe. So it's kind of weird to see him act again. Because I, I think he's been on record as saying, I don't really like acting. Um, mm. and, and he's done a couple of things over the you know last couple of decades, like Party Monster and stuff like that. And he's even stated, like, if I do something, it's going to be purely for fun. If it's, I don't care if it's just like an indie thing or whatever. It's got to be kind of fun to me, but otherwise I can't be bothered. Which is kind of weird that he's doing American Horror Stories, which is a whole like, you know, mainstream series. But so that's what's weird. Um, but uh, apparently I read part of the new interview he did with, I don't know if he's on fucking GQ or he's actually on one of these big magazines and he's the cover story. But he said he auditioned for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And he says it, he said it was the worst audition he's ever had in his life. And he obviously didn't get the part. So fuck boy. So which is weird. I wonder. It's like, oh, so is he trying to get back into acting legit or did Tarantino or something call him? Because Tarantino is all about putting in these kind of like actors of yesteryear. Or he cleaned up and now he wants to get back on drugs again. He wants to get dirty again. Yeah. Is, is that part of his arc? It does amaze me, though, like people that get on drugs and they come off drugs. It blows me away how the body just recoups. Because he literally looked like he was about 60 years old. He looked like a skinny 60-year-old, white-haired, you know, dope, dick-sucking crack fiend. But then... My kind of guy. He got healthy, and he looks like Macaulay Culkin again. He looks like a normal dude. So, it blows me away. And he's got that fucking money to, to pay the Illuminati. He sold his soul. He's naughty. Illuminati. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to talk about things we've been watching lately? 
Uh, so, okay. I've been watching more movies in the past fucking three months than I have in probably two years. So usually when I talk about these flicks that we've watched, I just want to pick out the heavies, right? The main, I, like, you know, I, I watched the lady and the tramp fucking live action. I'm not going to talk about that. That's just kind of fluff. You fall asleep to, and it's not that good. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to talk about the heavies. Um, cause I don't want to spend too, too long on it, but, uh, let's see. I watched, I went on a shutter original kick. I started watching a few of their, uh, originals. Like, uh, mm-hmm. what's the, I watched revenge. I really liked that. I gave that, it's a solid seven. It's it's our oh boy just recommended that in the comments of another uh, Mendoza the, the comments. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. I watched that back when it came out. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really good. I also watched Mayhem, that one that has uh, Glenn from The Walking Dead in it. Did you see that? I, I watched that, too. I liked it. I thought that was a seven. It was it was what it's exactly what the title of the movie implies. High octane, just fucking 85 minutes of just over the top. That girl in there is from, uh, she plays uh, Bill's daughter in the new Bill and Ted movie coming. Oh, for real. Yeah, it, I really enjoyed it. I, I really like fast paced fucking things like that. That don't, and it, you know, it didn't take itself seriously at all. And it was, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wasn't disorienting. I know a lot of flicks like that can be disorienting. Uh, I watched Haunt. That wasn't as good. That was just maybe a six, maybe even a five mm-hmm. if I go back and revise it. But uh, did you watch that? I have. I've been wanting to watch that one, Terrified. It's been a, it's a cool cover. And that, that's a that's an original? Yeah, it's like Korean or something, too. Okay, so yeah. I, I'm still on a kick. I mean, honestly, I watched uh, The Mayhem and the, the fucking Revenge first. I'm like, oh, these are pretty good movies. Haunt dipped it a little bit, but it wasn't bad. It was like, it was kind of fun, but... It, Shudder is actually streaming that show Channel Zero from uh, uh, Sci-Fi that I watched a while back, too. Okay, I'll have to check that out, too, then. Oh, what else have I watched? I, um, fuck did, uh, oh, that's right. Damn. Okay. I watched that shutter movie, Gwen. I couldn't even remember what the movie was. That's how fucking forgettable it was. Mm. That's where they started losing me. Like, okay, the streak of shutter originals is, is dipping now. Uh, did you see that? Uh-uh. It's like the witch light. Oh, okay. Cause it's very much like the witch. It's shot like the witch. It's even like a similar period piece of the witch, but it doesn't have uh, the fucking creepy ending of the witch. And it's just. It kind of goes nowhere, and man, I fell asleep five times watching this bitch. I, I don't know. I was probably really kind giving it two stars because I don't, I didn't remember it. it took me a few minutes to associate the film with the title. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's not, it's not very good. Uh, I guess I, that would have been four out of ten too. So mm-hmm. go ahead. I watched Mission Impossible Two, the John Woo classic, freaking yeah. oh boy, Tom Cruise saving the world from a virus that turns people into fucking Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining, all while a dank ass Limp Biscuit soundtrack plays. It was a five. <laughs> <laughs> it was a five. How many? How many stars? How many stars did the Limp Biscuit soundtrack give or reduce that by that score? Five. It gave it the five. Did they play the Metallica song in the credits? Hey, you know what's funny? Hey, hey, hey. They might have. They didn't even play like anything from it. They just played the. <laughs> oh, at the, at the, at the be- it's at the beginning. Dun, dun, with the title card, right? Yeah, they never even played any of the like lyric part of this. <laughs> I don't blame them. They just wanted the. Yeah. I've seen the beginning of the movie. I've seen the title card, how they do the fucking. Because I tried watching the movie once and I fell asleep. I was already kind of checked out like within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. But. Anyway, I watched Jojo Rabbit, that satirical like uh, Nazi Germany movie. Taki Watiti or whatever his name is. Yeah. Hell yeah. I talk a lot to T.A. That's what I kept thinking. Was it any good? It, yeah, I, I didn't like it as much as everybody else would like it. I, I'd say ran it. I gave it a six. Uh, I watched uh, It Comes at Night. You seen that? A long time ago. And I remember I was not in the right mood for it because the trailer for that, it tries to make it look like a horror movie. and It's not. Yeah, uh, well, I'm glad I never watched the trailers um, because I watched it. I gave it an eight. I really liked it. I, I really yeah. dug it. And um, it's kind of the fake out. You know, I get it. It's at the, By the time you get to the end of the movie, what is it? What is it? They're trolling you. It is just the paranoia and all that stuff that they're feeling with each other. It's not like a monster. It's not a physical deity or entity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought the movie was really effective. And like, dude, <laughs> I, I fucking I'm like, wow, I was a, that was a good watch. And I, I always ask my lady, like, what do you give it? She's like, I fucking hate that movie. It's a fucking one. Like, whoa. And sometimes I'm blown away by people. Like, I'm just like, are you watching the same movie I'm watching? Mm-hmm. I, I it blows me. But I thought it was an eight. I actually really liked it. I like Joel Edgerton. I think he's a, a good actor. He was in 
uh, Warrior, which is fucking in one of my favorite movies of the past, what, 10 years, I think it still it, it makes that cut. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I liked it. Uh, I watched I watched New Jack City. I had never seen New Jack City. And that's mm-hmm. a it's kind of a cult classic, right? Mm hmm. It's a six out of ten. It's fun. It's super fucking hammy. The dialogue's hammy. It's got Ice T and then Wesley Snipes in it. So it's just like got over the t- Wesley Snipes can be a really good actor, actually. But he also is kind of like Nick Cage, where he acts over the top sometimes and he does over the top really well. Mm-hmm. You think Demolition Man, uh, you know, Simon Phoenix and stuff like that. So he he kind of goes somewhere in between. He's kind of playing the bad guy, this gangster, this drug peddler, and he's really over the top and um but yeah, it's a, it's a solid it's a solid flick. Um, oh, I go ahead. I watched uh, Los Enchiladas. You ever heard of that movie? No. Mitch Hedberg wrote and directed it. Oh, I saw that on your uh, your app, and you it, didn't like it. It was yeah, like it was underwhelming. It was always like it was, it was never really finished and never really came out. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, you can watch it on YouTube. What the fuck? So yeah, I watched it. It's basically like Clerks, the B sides. So not very good. There's some funny uh, dialogue in there, but yeah, it's uh, not 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 great. So you watched it on YouTube. That's where you actually viewed it. Yeah, I gave it like a four. Okay. Uh, ooh, I I finally caught up to a movie that I almost went to the theaters to see when it came out a few years ago, and I'm glad I didn't waste the cheddar on it. Uh, The Void. What a fucking shitty movie that is. Fucking ter- I am so shocked that got a theatrical run because mm. it just oozes. I mean, it seems like a sci-fi original. Mm-hmm. I could, I guess I could see it on Shudder, like a Shudder original, but not a very good Shudder original. It just doesn't feel like a theatrical run movie. Uh, I, it, it so desperately badly wants to be Hellraiser mixed with uh, fucking a bunch of shit, man. I, I don't know. It was, it was Salt on Precinct 13 people were comparing it to. Yeah, it was mixing three like three main things together i don't know what like what else do i want to say i'm already forgetting the fucking movie but it it was mixing a few different already well-known movies together i watched it back when it came out and i don't remember anything about it dude it the thing is is it was so disorienting and the all the money and attention went into the special effects so Mm -hmm. much so that they forgot to write a script Mm -hmm. and that shit's not going to carry you yeah the effects were cool and it was really they were coming to do it like, oh, you know what? All the hardcore horror guys, they just want practical effects again. We're going to get so much cred if we could do all practical effects. They did, too. Like, people were talking about that movie when it came out. But yeah, were- and, and it worked, right? People were talking mm-hmm. about it for two seconds, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, literally, that can't float you. That can't float you the whole fucking time because the movie, the story is so fucking bad to where you just don't give a shit. Like, it's not saving it. Because mm-hmm. um, it is. it is. It's disorienting. You don't know what's going on. The movie doesn't know what it wants to be. It's so fucking spliced together. I don't know if that was an editing room mess or what. Dude, it's got the worst dialogue I've ever seen on a movie that got a theatrical run. I think I could have wrote that dialogue in that script in the eighth grade, I feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so shitty. Um, I'll never watch it again. It was fucking terrible. I just I couldn't wait for it to end. It was bad. Um, I watched two uh, shows on TLC that uh, I've been watching. Uh, Doctor Pebble Popper, new season of that. I can't do it. Watching watching that chick squeeze goo out of people's face is fucking orgasmic. And there's a new one called My Feet Are Killing Me, which I sent you a little snippet of. <laughs> the guy with the big deformed foot. Oh yeah, dude, that fucking made me want to vomit, man. Then they cut the toe off. It, did you see the picture of the toe? And I was like, yeah, they should have made that the toe from that that fucking oh. uh, Tell Tales in the Dark or whatever the fuck it's called. Dude, right? I'm getting the shivers just thinking about it because I had put it out of my mind and I instantly deleted the image out of our thread. Because I didn't want to like look at it. The chick in that show was pretty hot. Oh, Doctor Ebony. You know what? I didn't even mention it, but like, it it made me sick too. You know what else kind of gave me the willies? That makes me fucking grosses me out. We were watching Ken Park when she says, "Open your mouth," and she spits in his mouth. <laughs> that is so fucking gross to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't I don't know why because it's like you know people kiss and you tongue lock and it's kind of the same thing. You're swapping mm. saliva, but just and that's fine. But just the idea of someone hawking a loogie in your mouth is fucking disgusting. I, yeah. I, ugh. It's not a, not a turn on. Dude, if that was me and I was tied up and she did that to me, I'd be like, you fucking cunt. I would have fucking kicked her off. I would have like screamed. Like your dad did. Yeah, exactly. I would have beat him to it. Um, I, I, like I said, I've, there's so much shit I've watched. I'm just trying to pick the ones that are notable. I finally watched the original Red Dawn. I've never saw it. 
Never saw it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked it. You ever see that? Oh. So a lot of people, I know that director, he was <laughs> under fire at the time because accused of making a movie that was uh, politically extremely right leaning. Right. It's very gun happy and it, it depicts a post apocalyptic world when Russia, like the, the Red Scare movie, right? Yeah. Russia and uh, no, yeah, Russia and Cuba team up. Right. At the, it's like it's it's an amalgam of the Cold War going on and, and then the fucking uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Right. Mm -hmm. It literally is kind of like propaganda, like you know, like. Um, but they, they team up. They that too, didn't they? Yeah, I know, and they changed it to China or mm -hmm. North Korea. I can't remember which one it was, but I heard that was a pile of shit. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> in this weird, it this weird dystopian future, both Cuba <laughs> and Russia come together and they evade America. They they colonize it. They take over and um, you know, uh, Patrick Swayze, Charlie Sheen, C. Thomas Howell. These this group they put together like a vigil they become vigilantes when they initially invade they're able to escape up in the mountains and basically they hide up there and eventually they become this group of vigilantes and they start taking it all back you know uh, blowing up their fucking uh, bases and shit like that and they start a resistance movement okay so i get the propaganda of it but you know what it works dude the movie is so fucking silly uh, mm -hmm. It's not it's it's it, it is a movie that's trying to be serious and it is serious tone, but it doesn't bother me that it, it comes off pulpy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like like a, almost like this weird comic book where it has this alternate reality. Like, yeah, it's really fucking weird. The Russians and the Cubans team up and they invade. But the movie's entertaining as fuck. Do you ever see the C. Thomas Howell movie where he's wearing blackface? Called no, Soul I, Man? I, I never watched Soul Man. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it around quite a bit. Guess who directed that movie? I forget. Yeah, I forgot too. I forget his name. Oh. The director from uh, Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd read that as well. No, but dude, watch Red Dawn. I think it's a good movie. I think it's a I think it's a cool movie. And I saw it's on uh, Netflix or yeah, something. Yeah, that's that's how I watched it. And I think people people that are getting all uptight about it and the political nature of it, like I said, it's it's a it's a time from of the time period, right? It's probably the equivalent of when what's that Blumhouse movie coming out where they're they're killing all the fucking what's that Blumhouse movie that got pushed off? That's where they're killing like oh, liberals yeah, or, the or, or, or whatever. Or it's like I guess it's taking serious jabs at right the right side. Yeah, whatever. I'm not sure. Okay, so I have nothing to be mad at about Red Dawn, right? Because this movie came out before I was born. <laughs> it's like I don't give a fuck what the what the political landscape and what kind of did what uh fucking uh, what's his name Tarantino's movie did before he did it yeah oh yeah yeah so uh the movie's fun um and it's uh yeah it's it's just a fun time man it, don't take it too seriously I, I I think I think maybe people would get mad if they were taking it seriously but don't just like take it as like a pulpy fucking weird alternate reality obviously it can it probably would never happen and if if we ever did first of all we would never get invaded like that I mean uh National Guard fucking drop the ball in that movie but it's a fun mm -hmm. flick dude i watch it i'm actually curious if you'd watch it and let me know what you think mm -hmm. um because it's fun uh other than that oh i watched end of watch finally man did you ever see that um what's that about uh it's the david ayer movie i believe it was a second flick um and uh it's the movie that put him on the map i believe it's it's the movie with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, oh, I forget his name, the Latino actor. They're the cops. And it's basically kind of shot doc style, docu style. Oh, okay. I didn't see that one. You know what I'm talking about, though? Mm -hmm. It's like a day in the life of these two cops, these two beat cops. Yeah. And uh, dude, it's it's pretty riveting. Mm -hmm. I, I gave it an eight. And let me tell you that the move, it's got one of the better third acts I've seen in quite a while. Like the it's it's a really good movie. It's a, it's an eight at least. It's and the like I said the third act, dude. I was I, you're riveted. The whole it's just fucking great. That last fucking half hour is just nonstop. So I really really enjoyed it. I don't know what happened to David Ayer after that because after he did that flick and he had a lot of acclaim for it. He did um, what is that fucking movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? It's the uh the modern take on and then there were none. The Agatha Christie. What's that fucking movie? Um, you know what I'm talking about? Where he leads like oh, uh, sabotage, sabotage. Did you ever see that? Uh -huh. Okay. I don't know what the fuck happened with that one because that one, it, it feels like a David Ayer movie and it's got the same vibe, but it is all over the place in it's editing. So I, it kind of seems like it might've been in like an editing room nightmare. Mm. It's not bad. Like there's, you want to like the movie, but something happened in the editing room that just fucking makes it hard 
Uh, it's very, very, very flawed. Um, I wish, I wish they could go back and like do the old remix on that one because I would like to see that one done right because I think there's a good movie in there. Uh, but yeah, end of watch is much, 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 much better. Um, I will also say I saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Really? Yes, I did. How was it? Um, it is exactly what I bargained for. It's a hundred percent everything I knew it was going to be. Uh, down to the formula. <laughs> it's it's kind of the road trip movie. It, it hits all the standard beats of the formula it's trying to do. It's predictable. Um, it's 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 nothing great, but it's also nothing offensive. I saw a, a picture where uh, Sonic is driving in a car with a guy. I'm like, why the fuck? Just put it in neutral. Let him fucking push you. Like you'll get there faster. So they they write it, and a lot of people were bitching about that. But they kind of write it into the story why they ha- he has to take a car to get to San Francisco. Um, apparently, Sonic's is really fast. He just has no idea where he's going because he's not from Earth. Mm-hmm. And they even have like a little joke in there where he's like, "Yeah, he ends up in the ocean. He 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 runs real fast in one direction, comes back, and he's like soaked. So he doesn't know how to get there. Okay, whatever. Um, but you know what though? I I think a lot of people you you read it, it was a big hit. And I was shocked. Mm-hmm. It was a big hit. It, it's That's it's weird. It smashed the it's probably because nothing else comes out at this time of year too. Well, and well, uh, unlike most video game movies, it's directed at little kids, mm-hmm. and that's always going to be a big money maker. Which is kind of weird because how do kids remember that shit? They don't. Remember well, that. I don't think they have to. Yeah. I think uh, I think they're luring in the the thirty somethings because of the nostalgia. Ooh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I grew up with that. And they're just luring it off the fact that it's a it's a cute blue mascot in an animated movie for kids, new kids. Like they don't really have to give a shit about the games. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but with that said, I have to give it props though, man. In a, in a sense that uh, it, overall, it's getting reviewed well, or you know, kind of like in the middle of the road. It's what you'd expect or whatever. But it, it's really really big hit. It, it's the highest grossing uh, com- uh, video game adaptation of all time. Uh, and Detective Pikachu, I think, held the record for a bit, but it, it eclipsed Pikachu. Um, I, I I don't think it's a bad thing, man. Maybe it means people. I'd like to see video game adaptations be taken seriously. I mean, you know, I know they've been trying to. I guess they've been making that Metal Gear Solid movie for a long ass time. It's been work in the works, and they got mm-hmm. the director and everything. And I think they just finished the script. That scares me, but that's only because we've only had mostly shitty video game adaptations. But I do think it's possible that someone could raise the bar and do one so good to where all of a sudden that's not the way you see them anymore. Mm. Like the stigma will be lifted. Uh, and I hope they do it with like Metal Gear Solid because I don't want that to be shitty. But anyway, on to it. I noticed the people that are giving Sonic rave reviews are who you think. Younger crowds, uh, moms, you know, women. Uh but then I see the people that are shitting on it and, and I have to have a laugh and, and I, and I'm defending Sonic here because the people shitting on it are people like my age. They're shitting on it. I'm like, dude, you're a grown ass man shitting on this for being a kid's movie. You're being too hard on it. Mm-hmm. I went into it knowing it was ultimately going to be directed at kids. So I was forgiving of it. Like I didn't think all the jokes landed well. I didn't really think it was particularly amazing at being funny. There was a couple little things here and there I kind of chuckled at, but overall the jokes weren't landing with me, but I'm not a fucking kid. Dude, all the little kids in that theater, it was packed by the way. Did you watch after the credits when Tails showed up? Yes, I did. But See, I wonder if they had to re-fucking do Tails design. He probably looked more human-like originally. Yeah, yeah, right, because he looks in sync with the new Sonic. Uh, but yeah. anyway, so like I said, I didn't think the jokes were landing, and I didn't think they were overall really funny for me. But I couldn't ignore the theater was packed with tons of kids, little kids and family. Dude, the kids were dying laughing. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm not going to be the fucking weird-ass middle-aged guy that's fucking shitting on a kid's movie. <laughs> it it, it yeah, sounds, sounds a little pathetic. Th- there's a, like a big freaking like uh, backlash whenever they changed Sonic. Remember whenever they changed his arms to blue rather than yeah. tan? Uh huh. <laughs> the internet freaking out. There's like a weird uh, autism uh, about Sonic. Like uh, it's it's one of the only characters that you can literally write your name in. You could go to Google, write your name, and then the Hedgehog, and you're always gonna find a fucking drawn uh, Zach the Hedgehog, and then a whole backstory behind it. Like they do it for literally everybody. I guarantee it. Go to Google, put in Adrian the Hedgehog, uh, Aaron the Hedgehog. You're always going to find it. It's funny. I'll have to do it. But yeah, so I, I'm, I, gave it a, I gave it a 6 out of 10 because it's like, dude, I, I totally knew what I was walking into. 
I a hundred percent knew what I was walking into. And yeah, the story, I it's, it's, it's formula. It's been done a million times and it's, uh, it's got every trope in the book, you know, every fucking script, buddy, comedy, kid movie trope in there. It's all very predictable. But like I said, I don't think the movie's for me. I don't think it's directed at me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have to look at it for what it is. I'm looking at it compared to other kids movies. And if I look at it like that, it's a six out of 10. It's, it's solid. It's fine. You know, whatever. It's not, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other kid movies that I, I think are actually fucking good even as an adult, but, but it's fine. It's as a kid's movie, but yeah, bottom line is these fucking 45 year olds living in their mom's basement that are talking about it. Like it's supposed to be citizen Kane need to fucking get off the dick. They're sitting on it. Cause that's just silly. Um, Jim Carrey is Jim Carrey light. The movie's PG, right? Mm -hmm. he, I know he was talking about how like, oh, this is Jim Carrey acting like Jim Carrey again. It is. He's basically doing his Ace Ventura impression. He's mm -hmm. he's he's Ace Ventura. He's I mean, which is weird because it's like on one hand, I like it. But on the other hand, it's like, I mean, this has kind of been done before. Um, But it's Ace Ventura for kids. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, the, that scene where fucking uh, Sonic's uh, girlfriend character starts sucking his dick and he grabs the top of the roof and starts fucking flying about. He's like, oh, that's the best scene in the movie. <laughs> okay <laughs> that was ace ventura right i know i know the first ace ventura yeah people are really friendly around here <laughs> as he's going in circles uh but i will say this though jim carrey seemed to have been having a lot of fun in the role which i kind of appreciate it so it's like i don't know i there was a genuineness to it that helped me like it more you know what i mean like even though the jokes weren't all for me or whatever i can genuinely tell they were having fun making the movie jim carrey was having fun being that character and uh, they set it up for a sequel and he's more like Robotnik in the sequel. Like I'm actually kind of intrigued. Like, OK, mm -hmm. I want to see what they do with the sequel. Now they kind of got this like formulaic fucking Earth Sonic, this thing they did. I, you know, now I want to see Jim Carrey go full on Dr. Robotnik and Jim Carrey because he, he probably is one of the better parts of the movie. So uh, if you ever want to watch it with your niece or something, totally watch it. It's it's fine. You could there's worse fucking kid movies you can watch. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, I guess the last thing I want to talk about. Oh, sorry. Really quick. I will say I watched uh, King of New York, too. You ever mm -hmm. see that? Sounds familiar. OK, I can't for the life of me think of what. Uh, is that the is that the King Kong ain't got poop on me movie? <laughs> well, that's training day. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. What did uh, King King of New York, the guy who directed that? Hold on. Uh, oh, Abel Ferrara. What did he direct? I know he directed uh, Bad Lieutenant. Yeah, and uh, Miss 45. And stuff. Miss 45, Bad Lieutenant. He directed King of New York, and uh, it was it was good. It was, uh, it was a seven. It's very similar to New Jack City in its themes. And I actually hear, I heard I was reading that um, they came out around the same time. And uh, King of New York, at the time, it's since become a, a cult classic or whatever. But at the time, it got buried in the box office because literally a couple weeks later, New Jack City came out, and that was the one that resonated and became a hit. Mm -hmm. but it's it's new jack city is actually the, the inferior movie i mean new jack city is like a six out of ten it's fine it's it's okay it's decent but this movie's a seven um christopher walken gives a really really good performance in it and um it's got a pretty eclectic cast in itself like a lot of a lot of lawrence fishburne plays this gangster this is lawrence fishburne before boys in the hood because this is 1990 so this is right between cowboy curtis and boys in the hood so it's very interesting. So I recommend watching that one too. And the last thing I'll say is uh, I watched that newest Netflix original man that the last thing he wanted with Ben Affleck and uh, what's her Anne Hathaway. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I've heard of it. I haven't looked at it. Oh my God, dude, that is the worst movie I've seen uh, next to uh, what is that fucking movie? I, I told you it was terrible. I couldn't even finish it. I can't even remember what it's fucking called that movie. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it was bad. I gave it one. It's a one star. I saw that on the uh, letterbox. Yeah. Fucking terror. I can't believe these movies get passed. I don't know what happened. And, ha and how do they rope Ben Affleck and Anne Hathaway? These people that are commanding big in these movies. And it's the new G uh, Geely. Remember that movie? Oh, yeah. I never watched it. But, you know, and I'm watching the movie and, and Ben Affleck. I think maybe he. I don't know. It seems like a movie that fell apart, maybe on paper when they're sold the movie. Yeah, it's based on a true story. We can make a gritty movie. That'll be really good. Um, so I, I would think filming it, he might not know it was shitty, but Ben Affleck really seemed fucking tuned out on this one. Like he knew he was in a piece of shit. Maybe he read the script and it really was kind of how it ended up after the edit. And it was just really boring because yeah. 
it's super boring and it's just it's just shitty it's just terribly boring man and for the kind of movie it's trying to be it's aspiring to be it's so fucking predictable man you see the twist from the first five minutes of the movie and and nothing's worse than seeing the twist in the first five minutes of the movie yet the movie is still carrying on two hours later uh pretending like it doesn't have an unpredictable twist mm-hmm. like I, I get it just fucking lift the curtain i know what you guys are gonna do it's i i watched that original docuseries the pharmacist on netflix that's really good yeah oh uh, I'll have to watch that. I need something good though to cleanse the palate, man, because I'm t- I'm not even understanding that fucking movie. If you guys and you know what's funny is I make it a point to not look at reviews on a letterbox before I watch a movie. I don't want mm-hmm. to because I feel like it'll influence me or it'll I don't it'll give me certain hopes for better or worse before I start it. So I watch whatever blindly and then I go to the reviews after I've reviewed it myself. Mm-hmm. Dude, oh look at the reviews for that movie. They're dude, it's a flood of one stars. It's a flood of half stars, one stars. You know how it shows like the rating average up top with the grid? Mm-hmm. Dude, it's all on the front end. There's nothing even touching three or four or five in the middle. Dude, I'm like, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Like you see those movies sometimes once in a while where you're like, okay, I can see how somebody might like this, but this is fucking terrible to me. No, you you see those flicks every now and again too, where it's like, no, everybody's going to think this is horse shit. There's no way anybody <laughs> likes this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, And that's the way I felt, but. Anyway, that's a that rant's over. Uh, that's that's all I got for flicks I've watched. You got any last things? Um, uh, I've been watching the Sabrina show. Like I, I watched the first season and I was like, oh yeah, maybe this will be like uh, fucking uh, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I like that show. Maybe this will uh, sc- scratch that itch. And I didn't. I, after the first season, I was like, oh, it didn't really, it didn't really do anything for me. But then I'm watching the second season now. I watched I'm in the, the middle. Of I it. watched all three seasons. It get, it get better. Um. So I'll say this. Like I said, so far I'm liking the second season. Okay. Yeah, I watched it because like my lady likes it, and so I actually sorry. I take it back. I never really really watched the first season. I jumped in on the second season because it was new oh. at the time, and she wanted to watch it, and I just kind of got the recap, like whatever. Um. Mm-hmm. And I I actually really like season two. It's fine. And then I really like season three. So I'm just assuming the first one is is on par, but I don't know. But I like two and three. Um. Mm-hmm. What I did like is uh. Three is very much different than two, but in a good way. Like it's not same, same. They Mm -hmm. definitely take it to another place where it needs to go. So, I mean, consider the audience. Like, obviously they're going after this weird tween, young adult, young woman Mm -hmm. uh, demographic. It's very PC. Like they throw some, they throw some stuff in there. That's just there for the sake of being there. Mm. Like I'm not against, dude, I am. I'll just put it out there. I'm not against, characters being represented orientations uh races being but but sometimes it's like really out of left field like why did they just throw that in there out of nowhere like it, you'll know what i'm talking about as you watch the series it's just like that's really fucking shoehorned in and it makes no stuff that's not representing of the character as a whole like you'll watch you'll watch the series for fucking 15 episodes and they're going to be one way but then they'll throw something at you for for the sake of it just being there and one and like what is this i, I know mm-hmm. i'm being vague but you got to deal with that. I've accepted that with uh, with just watching modern shit. It doesn't always bother me though. Like I've, uh, I think we were talking about this when we did our extra commentary. I don't mind when most of the time when they when they want to represent certain races. That doesn't bother me because like if it doesn't matter the story, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, if anything, all it does is kind of date the movie of a period, just like the movies always did. So mm-hmm. I don't mind that at all. You know, if you watch Breakfast at Tiffany's and you see Mickey Rooney with tape <laughs> on his eyes doing like a Japanese accent and he has the buck teeth. Like, oh, I'm Richard Carver. That's that you watch that and you can't imagine doing that now. But when you watch a movie like that or like a movie back in the day, black and white, that also had like blackface, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> they took a white guy and just spray tandem. Um, that's you. You acknowledge, wow, that is nothing that we would do today, but it's clearly a product of the time. Mm-hmm. I'm in, in, in 30 years. I'm going to watch a movie that came out uh, this year in the last five years. And I'm instantly going to know when it came out. Right. When mm-hmm. you see uh, the main character being white, married to a black girl um, and having like a gay son, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't always like 
matter. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. What movie was I watching? I was watching. I hope I do have a gay. You know what I was thinking of? That would have been great to be gay growing up because you know what the like the greatest thing you could have done to your bully would yeah. like just fuck is it like hey I fucked your dad I, I paid your dad. Like, just tell your bully that while he's beating the shit out of you. Like, I, I came on to your dad and fucked the shit out of him. Can you imagine, like, if you're getting dogpiled by the bully and he's on top and you're like, I'm getting a hard on right now. <laughs> like, like, hell yeah. That's what you do to freak him out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, but, oh, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so an example of where I think it's totally cool. Um, it comes at night, that movie. Okay, Joel Edgerton is married to a black woman and they have a mixed son. It, it's fine. Like it, it, the, the skin color has nothing to do with the story at all. It's not like they're trying to cast a black guy as a Lincoln or a white guy, a white woman as Rosa Parks. You know, that's mm-hmm. where it gets like, what the fuck is this? Um, no, does it ever show them fuck? And does it ever show them coming at night? No, no, but I've seen something like that's totally fine because that is representing of the year it takes place to me. That's mm-hmm. totally cool. That's fine. Um, if that makes sense, uh, whatever. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But sometimes you watch fucking shit and it's like, what the fuck is it? It's it's total pandering. Like this is weird. Um. Anyway, that's all I got though. That's all I got too. All right, guys, we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about Zach's pick for this week. You want to tell him what it is? Fucking Ken Park. That's if you guys can't fucking read the title of the video and the thumbnails, bitches. We'll be right back. Movie Ken Park. It's close. From, from kids, uh, how would you compare the two movies? Well, it's a companion piece to kids, really. I mean, when I made kids, everybody said, where are the parents? And I said, wait for Ken Park. They're in Ken Park. So uh, um, uh, kids was about kids when the parents weren't around in their own secret world. And uh, Ken Park is about families, parents and children. And it's about how, every, how all of us have to survive our families, uh, whether they're good families or bad families or messed up families. All of us have to, at some point, uh, get past that and survive our families. There's no such thing as good families. I can't hear you. In the movies, there's no such thing as good families. Well, no, they're pretty dysfunctional families. Uh, at least uh, we can say. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had all these stories that I wanted to tell uh, about families and about uh, um, these kids. And, uh, uh, and I decided to put them all together in one film, so uh, uh, they're all there. Where do you, you get the stories? Where does, where does it come from? Well, two of the stories uh, are, are based on people I know very well. So they're right on true stories uh, about a couple of friends of mine. Um, the other two characters are based on uh, things I've read and things I've seen uh, uh, about people, uh, things that happen. Uh, these are all, you know, based in reality, um, real life, um, and I think the trick was to make it as authentic as uh, possible in the film, and I think it works. How do you pass the difficulty when it's a, a sex scene, like the, the scene where the guy is jerking off and, and the scene has happened? Well, James Ransone, who plays Tate, uh, I met him in New York. Uh, uh, he's the only actor out of New York. Uh, yeah. but he had had a little experience as an actor. Everybody else had never acted before, but uh, Jane, uh, PJ, uh, PJ had, um, 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 I met PJ, he wanted to do it, wanted to do the role, and uh, um, I, I met him a year before we did the film, so he had a year to prepare, um, uh, and we did it obviously in one take, so, uh, so he was ready, but it was a difficult, uh, difficult, uh, um, you know, emotionally devastating uh, uh, performance. Um, uh, but but an incredible. I mean, you know, you got to want to do it. You know, I mean, I mean, this. He's a courageous young actor and a terrific actor. Yeah. Really amazing. Uh, you have no boundaries. You, you never you never say to yourself, I go too far. Well, I'm an. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's funny. I do. I. You know, I look. I say, man, maybe uh, you, you know, you know, you know, you've gone too far. I always think I've gone too far, but. Um, but as an artist, you know, I don't think in those terms. I mean, I come from the art world, so, you know, you make work and you show work, and, uh, and in the art world, it's fine. But, uh, but this, is, this is different, and, you know, when you're making film, you're reaching such a bigger audience and you're reaching the public, um, uh, and there's all these rules. But as an artist, I don't think in terms of rules. I never think about what you can't do, you know, what you're not supposed to do. I mean, I just, you know, do it. You know, this is a, this is a film 
that has uh, an emotional honesty and it has a visual honesty. And if you're making a film that has emotional and visual honesty and then you come to scenes and you turn the camera away or go to close up or shut the door, then you're not being honest. And uh, I wanted this film to be totally honest. And, um, um, and if some uh, uh, scenes are startling, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just the way it is, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm truthfully not doing things to shock, I'm doing things, I'm telling stories that I think need to be told that aren't told, that you read about in the paper every day, that you know people that this happens to, um, uh, especially today in the information age, everybody knows everything, you know, we know this is going on, um, you know, so I'm, I want to show it, I mean, if I could see these stories somewhere else, I don't think I'd have to make them, but, you know, I feel a need to tell these stories, and uh, I, um, um, sometimes I think, gee, you know, why can't I just, you know, make a nice, light, you know, air-headed comedy? And uh, maybe I will someday, but but this is this is uh, um, what I want to do now. All right, dudes and dudettes, we're back, and uh, we're going to be talking about Ken Park. Zach, this is your fucking pick, so you take it away and kind of give everybody the overview, paint the picture for all at home. We talk about fucking crap neck over here. Yeah, I'm just going to read this fucking thing on IDB because it's a, it's a good fucking summary. Kid Park is a controversial 2002 erotic drama from a director, Larry Clark and Edward Lockman. Kids. Uh, yeah. The film depicts the suicide of ugly teenager Kid Park. Why you got to call him ugly? Yeah, that was never addressed, by the way. You fucking assholes. Like, That's- that, you're, you're fucking bullying him. That's probably why he committed suicide. Isn't that funny? Is that really in the official synopsis? Yeah. Wait, because they never... Ken Park is a total side note. Like, honestly, uh, maybe there's like an overall theme there, but... And it's never... He's never really described as anything but their friend at the end. So why the ugly remark? That's kind of weird. They're assholes. That just says, hey, look, we need to cast a really ugly kid. And and we... For the only reason, because we want to call you ugly, because we're not even going to say it in the movie, but we just want to call you ugly in the synopsis. This is just a... This is a fan-made thing. Okay. Oh, so that's the fucking asshole. Gotcha. All right. So the film depicts suicide by ugly teenager Ken Park, which affects the lives of other teenagers, Sean, an unattractive teenager. See, they fucking called him ugly, too. He's going to kill himself next. (laughs) Unattractive teenager whom is having a sexual affair with his girlfriend's mother, which is uh, his girlfriend's mom isn't ugly. Uh, Claude, uh, another friend, a troubled teenager whom suffers abuse and neglect from his parents. Peaches, a sexually active teenager whom fights for freedom from her religious but sexually abusive father and Tate fucking Tate he's my favorite a teenager with a violent temper whom hates his grandparents because they won't respect his privacy that's the that's the overall plan it's another slice of life movie so like happiness it very it it definitely had happiness vibes to it the de- same type of genre it didn't surprise me it was by I read after the fact it was by the same director of kids, right? Um, same director and writer. Larry and Clark writer. and Harmony Kareen got back together, teamed up again. And I'm not going to... Didn't Harmony Kareen also do Spring Breakers? Yep. Did she direct it or write it? Which which one did she... It's a he. He uh, directed and wrote it. Okay. He did another movie, this, uh, like, 2019 also. I forget what it's called. Beach Bum or something like that. Oh, Beach Bum. Who's in that? Um, who was it? The fucking Snoop Dogg's in that. Isn't isn't it a comedian? There's a comedian. Oh no, it's Ma- it's Matthew McConaughey, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet. That's weird. I didn't realize that was Harmony Korine. So I, I actually liked uh fucking Spring Breakers. Mm-hmm. It wasn't amazing, but it was it was good. It was good. I I don't remember. It's a it was a good flick. Um, I don't think a movie like this is anything like Spring Breakers, but that's a good thing. I think it's a little bit more like a kid's than it is like a Spring Breakers. And I know there's a... You ever see Gummo? No. His first movie? No. That's a weird one. All of his movies are kind of weird. Yeah. I I mean, obviously, there's like, what, like a fucking 14-year gap between Spring Breakers and something like this. I don't know what he did in between, but I saw this was made in 2002. So I will say I agree with you that Tate was my favorite character because I, I found myself laughing quite a bit. Um, did you recognize him, by the way? I recognize a couple people in this movie. I couldn't, I, I, I recognize Tate, but I couldn't put it where it was from. And I also recognized uh, Peach's dad. And I don't remember, was he on Seinfeld or something? He was on some comedy, something or other, her dad. So uh, tell me where Tate's from. He, uh, he was fucking, he plays Georgie in the new It, chapter two. 
Oh, I didn't see. I didn't see it chapter two. Yeah, that's kind of like his big break. I I saw a, like a uh, thing today that said like, oh, he was thinking about leaving Hollywood until he got that part. Before that, he was in uh, what's that movie with uh, fucking uh, Sinister one and two? We played the cop character. Oh, okay, and where where do I know Peach's dad from? Uh, I'll look real quick. Let's he is see. he is from something, and I want to say it's comedy. While you're looking for that, this movie also features one Patrick motherfucking star. Fucking uh, Patrick Star himself. Holy shit. That's right. Yeah. He's the dad of the mom that's getting <laughs> fucked by that kid. Her Dude. That's dude, right. Bl- mind blown. So not only is is the mom fucking this kid, it's her daughter's boyfriend. This is out of a Pornhub thing. Yeah. He even tells her that her pussy smells just like her daughter's pussy. And that whole thing is really fucking <laughs> creepy, man. And she's kind of into it. Like, and you're better in bed. Really? Oh, it's just, it's really odd how nonchalant the mom is about all of it. Really? It says Peach's dad is known for Planet Terror, Jurassic Park Tree, Blue Streak. Uh, he might be in Seinfeld. It's not on the known for, though. Huh. Okay, but well, I've seen him places. I doubt it's Blue Streak, because I haven't seen that subpar movie in probably 15 years. Oh, uh, a terrific film. I know. But anyway, I don't know how you want to go about talking about this flick. Do you want to ask me questions in sequence? I made some bullet points to go over. So and I, I, I want you to take the lead on this, right? Because this is your flick, and I want you to sort of take me through it in whatever order you want me to, and and we'll, and you kind of present the talking points, and I'll and I'll elaborate my thoughts on it. Donk. Okay, so it starts out with fucking crap neck. He fucking uh, he's, he's skateboarding, and we get a fucking uh, yeah a scene of him just skateboarding, and then he gets to uh, a skate park and pulls out a gun and blows his fucking head off. Why do that? Which is very much like the happiness intro, right? The really happy, playful with the therapist, you know. And all of a sudden, he starts blowing everybody away, away in the park. It kind of had a vibe like that. Like, hey, this is innocent. Oh, this is gonna be a movie like mid nineties, right? Ah, uh. <laughs> then, then the so. At the start of the movie there, that opening scene, you know, it grabbed me. It was good. I'm like, okay. It, and I already knew at that point, I'm like, okay, we're, we're in for happiness part two. I can already <laughs> tell. I knew it. I'm like every, and, 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 and even down, even down to it being multi-character arcs, right? Going on at the mm. same time and everybody's got their own fucked up. Um, I, I don't want to say unrealistic, but embellished of real life. Mm. Like what are the odds that this core group of friends will all have this much of a fucked up broken home? Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, that's unrealistic. But, uh, by the way, I want to sidestep here in, in, in that synopsis you read by that one dickhead in no way, shape or form do any of these friends feel like their lives are impacted by the kid, kid committing suicide. Yeah. They're not so much, but it, it does kind of fucking, uh, play into the beginning and end of the movie. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Then we meet Sean. He's the one that's fucking his uh, girlfriend's mom, and his Lucky. girlfriend's mom is is pretty. High. He, that's funny because like he walks in, fucking. Uh, he he talks to the mom. He's like, "Oh yeah, they're just sitting there." And he goes, "Can I eat you out?" And it's like, "Oh fuck, she's gonna smack the shit out of him." And she's like, "Not right now." And it's like, "Oh, fuck. dude, dude." At a point, dude, I, I was fucking getting turned on by by on it because I'm like, "This fucking kid is so lucky." Because that fucking chick, asshole. that chick was banging, dude. She is a ten, and her tits. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get grotesque here, but like, I was envious. He was eating her pussy out. And I'm like, "Dude, this fucking little kid." Like, this is every kid's fantasy. I know exactly. But watching it as an adult, it's like, "Oh, that's kind of disturbing." No, it is. It's very disturbing. <laughs> well, here's why it's disturbing because. You think about like 16 year old you and I'm like, oh, man, that was like your fantasy. But as an adult, it's still I can still imagine that whether or not you would have like liked it if you were a kid, it's going to like it's going to fuck up that kid. Right. Mm-hmm. Like even though he's a guy and I know guys are treated differently than women in that respect when it comes to relationships like that. But whether he knows it or not, like what that woman is doing to that kid is going to fuck him up. It's going to change the trajectory of his, of his up and how he grows up and how he perceives sex. That's going to um, change the trajectory of his cum shot too. Cause she's fucking uh, banging. But you know what I mean though? It's going to fuck him up. Whether that makes him a sex addict or whether that fucking just ruins him for other women, you know, because pff, dude, she's a fucking 10, man. Can you imagine mm-hmm. if the first chick you ever got was a 10 like that? And it was like the Stacy's mom type of situation. 
And then what if like he he really hits his growth spurt and he turns out to be kind of an ugly dude and he has no luck with the ladies and it's like I never got it again. He could just find the fucking mom again and fuck the shit out of her. Then she's gonna be too old, man. Isn't it funny? Like I'm older. I like that. It's funny how guys say that the guys that like older chicks they like older chicks until they're fucking expired. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like oh yeah. Thirties in forties. Fuck, dude. Fuck me. There's 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 some hot ass fifties. You know. Mm-hmm. But come on, man. <laughs> if you're 20 years younger, man, once you're 40s, you're 50s, you ain't going to want the 70 something year old, right? And mm-hmm. once you're a guy and you're in your 40s, well, then you're prime for the younger ladies. That's when the fucking 20 year olds want you, man. Hell yeah. When you're older. So, um, anyway, continue on. Continue. On. I, okay. So, so I, sorry, I, I will say this. Something good about the flick is every scene was engaging. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, everybody's, arc was equally interesting so i i will say that like it wasn't boring or anything so continue so kids john he's dating a, uh, a girl sleeping with their mom while he's he's her husband's at work and uh, like while the little the youngest daughter is watching a weird loop of women in bikinis weird it, what the <laughs> fuck is that all about by the way I think they just replayed the same shot and she just happened to be watching the same. Or is that just supposed to signify that, you know, she's the absentee, right? She's like her mother's because like her mother's not even watching her. She's just mesmerized yeah. by the TV and her mom's fucking kids. Maybe s- sex is being sold to kids while they're young. Maybe there's some kind of subtext there, which, by the way, I was waiting for that little kid at the end of the movie to say something that outed their relationship in front, in front of the dad. Exactly. That would have been the greatest ending. I thought that's what was going to happen. Like, what is the else? The, the purpose of the. The kid like seeing him come in and out of the house like I thought it but she was fearless dude she was like playing all the like, yeah come over for brisket and the ball game tomorrow you should totally come she's totally embracing that mom life like it's not going on and it with the little girl there dude I would be fucking so scared because kids say the darndest things that at every waking moment she was gonna say oh wow he's like daddy your dick isn't nearly as big as whatever his name is <laughs> like oh god oh, when he asked hey is my dick bigger anyway continue so, so yeah, like the the scene itself where he's uh, doing the mom that she's grabbing his junk, rubbing it. She he starts rubbing her. He starts licking her. She's like, "That's a good boy, Sean. That's Dude, a good boy." I- <laughs> this is this shot of him looking up at her with his head in between her legs is the DVD cover, by the way. Oh yeah, dude, it was straight up pornographic because he was really licking her pussy. Exactly. He was not faking that shit. And uh, the weakest link in the chain for the movie is the acting, because like these are uh, these aren't real actors. So their original idea was to get kid actors and and have like adult versions of them to play like those scenes, like for the body doubles. Mm-hmm. But then they just found like certain actors that looked like kids, and they're like, let's just hire them. And uh, like the worst one was uh, the fucking uh, the kid with the shaved head, probably. Yeah, with a weird like gangster accent at southern yeah first time you hear him talk it just sounds like he's reading the lines off of paper yeah yeah it's it's not very he's very wooden so like when he's trying to step up to his dad when they're on when he when he breaks his board Mm -hmm. him getting angry kind of came unnaturally out of nowhere because you i don't know his emotions didn't seem like he was he because one second he feels like he's not going to do anything and he's kind of a pushover but then all of a sudden he's like Try again, bitch. I'm like, whoa. Like, he's clearly wooden and just reading shit. It didn't, it wasn't mm-hmm. flowing for me. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, yeah. The fucking, the, she's cheated. Her husband is Patrick Starr. He comes over after, you know, the dad is off with his girlfriend and everything. The dad asks like, oh yeah, you want to come watch the game? So the dad's nice to him. And it's like, well, why do we do this to each other? Fucking people. Fucking assholes. I don't know, man. Uh, but his arc was interesting uh, and I, I i don't i don't know what the takeaway from what I mean, probably what you were saying there's some subtext about uh kids being sexualized and i mean just touching on the i guess abuse i i don't fucking know I, it was fun to watch though it was interesting i i think i think we don't get to see any of these kids unravel in this movie i think it's all like a precursor like later on this kid's going to be fucked up just like the other kid, the one with the shaved head, like later on, he's going to be real fucked up and uh, probably even the girl, the peaches. I don't know. She seemed kind of fucked up in the, in the moment, but yeah, let's, let's talk about the shaved head kid. I forget his name. Can I, but, uh, I'll tell you my pit really quick on the shaved head kid. Um, I will say this during watching his, 
I related the most. I can't relate to the fucking first guy because I never fucking banged my girlfriend's mom, dude, when I was 16 or whatever the fuck. Um, but I'd say out of all of them, I could relate to the shaved head kids because, come on, man. I, I, at first, I didn't know because this guy was such an asshole to him. I'm like, this has to be a stepdad, that cliche stepdad asshole that married the mom. But no, it's his real fucking dad. Uh, I, I didn't even realize that either. So, like, we meet him. We meet, like, his, his mom is pregnant and she's smoking, which is awesome. That's always good. He clipping them toenails, though. Yeah, what? fucking, and his his mom's got like yeah. We'll we'll get to that later. Like step stepdad breaks the skateboard. They're setting up tension between him and the stepdad. Like uh, the, like the stepdad's pissed off. He's like, oh, your mom thinks you're fucking gay and shit and stuff like that. And so it's like, oh man, he's gonna like, is he gay? Is he gonna fucking like beat up his son? And that kind of we'll get to that a little later. We I don't want to spoil that yet. Uh, but yeah, it leads up to something pretty fucking, uh, I didn't see coming. I saw it coming a mile away. Oh, thanks. So you, uh, fucking identify with him. Did that happen to you? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, I will last, let me tell you my opinion. I was going to say this. I was going to say at first, well, maybe not a mile away because I didn't know it from the very, very beginning, but at the be those beginning scene of him, I related to it. Up until I realized what was going to happen with the dad, because my dad never fucking sucked my dick in my sleep. See, I was going to run away, but yeah, I, he I know, it, I know. He just let it drop. But yeah, when, you know, after the second time, he really pressed the whole faggot thing. I'm like, okay, clearly this is a case of a repressed guy, you know, or mm -hmm. something's going on with him. He's that type of dude. Um, and then they laid it on kind of thick when he's going out fucking cruising with his fat fucking friend. You know, the guy from that was the jump to conclusions, Matt guy. The Hoorah. He was all, oh, yeah. you know, Joe Dirt. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I don't really think it was realistic how he kept like going away from the hookers he wanted to get. I just think it was there merely to paint a bigger picture for the audience. Like, oh, there's something wrong with this guy. Um, I, anyway, I, I knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when. And I in the whole scene where and when it finally got to the scene where it was going, where I knew it was going to happen. I was my butthole was clenching up. Like, oh, I don't want this to happen. Like, because I didn't know what he was going to do. Right. I knew something mm -hmm. was going to go on. I'm like, is he going to fucking rape him? God, because, dude, when it comes to scenes of rape, dude, I fucking get to me. Rape is hard. hard. No, <laughs> rape is harder to watch than like violent shit. Sometimes like blood and gore, like, a, mm -hmm. like it's just sometimes it's real tough. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give that. But stepdad comes home drunk, sees the mom's asleep, pisses into the toilet without holding his dick, which is the greatest scene ever. He just fucking <laughs> just lets it hang and pisses. A lot of way more dicks in this movie than tits, by the way. Exactly. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> okay. And then he proceeds to try and suck the stepson, suck his wee wee as he's asleep. It's his real step. It's his real son. Yeah, it's his real son. That happens just Worse. a couple scenes after the kid with the shaved head is bitching about his stepdad with his friends. And one of his friends is like talking about like, oh, yeah, my dad went to a coma and stuff like that. Like, uh, you should appreciate your dad while he's still there. And he, <laughs> he looks like he's understanding. Like, yeah, you're right. And then he goes home and his dad tries to fucking suck his dick. But you keep calling him his stepdad. It's his real dad. Yeah. Which is I, fucking I, All worse. my notes say stepdad. Okay. So it's probably it's, it's I mean, it's disturbing either way, but it's even more disturbing, right? Well, you remember what he said to him when he woke up and said, what are you doing? It's like, hey, it's just me. Your, it's just your dad. Right? Yeah, he's like, it's me, daddy. It's just me, dad. dad. You mean dad. <laughs> like, oh. that's fucked up. Oh. Yeah, so, okay. What, so it's okay. Is that why his mom has short hair? Like, oh, yeah, I like your mom. She's got, she looks like a dude, baby. And then he just wanted to fuck the stepson the whole you, time. You know who his mom was, right? Uh-uh. That was Amanda Plummer, Christopher Plummer, uh, his daughter. And she was also Honey Bunny in Pulp Fiction and a bunch of other shit. Dog. Yeah. Anyway, side note. Okay, let's talk about Tate, my favorite character. Yeah, he was the he was the most because uh, I look at this flick and I'm like, who would I who would I want to see their story? If the whole movie was Tate. Yeah, I yeah. Think it like <laughs> who, who whose sub story do I want to see expanded into a whole movie and just explore this guy? It's definitely Tate. A hundred percent. So Tate, when we meet Tate, he's looking at pictures of starving African kids and he's writing names on them, on the pictures like Billy and Gary, Gary Coleman, different strokes. <laughs> and like he, he goes through, he's naming uh, fucking uh, Mr. Drummond. He's he, like, he's just naming these like for no reason. And then he yells at his dog legs. He calls him because like the dog is missing a leg and he fucking like, he's like legs. I'm working. 
It's like you're working with the that's the best job ever. I want that job. <laughs> fucking give me that, Tate. And then like he gets up and he fucking like smacks his dog and the dog's like yelps. And then his grandma walks in and starts like just trying to give him something to eat and she, he starts yelling at the grandma. Like, what the fuck, grandpa? Yeah, don't come in here to annoy me while I'm working. He's the best actor of the bunch. Like, yeah, his delivery is funny. It's 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 also a little fucking unhinged. Uh, he he's the best. He's really good in this, and I I remember thinking that it's weird because like, whenever I saw him in uh, fucking uh, what's the movie uh, where he played the cop, uh, I, Sinister, Sinister. I was like, he's not very good in this. Like, uh, he, he got worse acting wise. And then in Sinister 2, he's just as bad. Maybe it's just because he's playing these fucking nice characters. He needs to play like uh, crazy deviants again. You know, it's funny. He, did, he does pretty good. in uh, it. <laughs> when I was watching that scene, mm-hmm. uh, when he's particularly yelling at his grandma, she's got the sandwich for him. Uh, you know, the scene, you know, where he uh, yells at her and he takes a sandwich and throws it down mm-hmm. on the ground. Okay. So. At that moment, I had turned my head away for a second. I was kind of watching out my peripheral for a millisecond. So when my head was turned, it was out of my peripheral that I I heard him slam the sandwich on the ground. And I thought I saw him fucking bitch slap his grandma. And I was like, <laughs> and I died laughing. Like, I had to rewind it. Like, did he just fucking bitch slap his grandma? And when I saw he just threw the sandwich down, it wasn't as funny. But I'm like, it would have been so much more funny and like shocking if he just like knocked her out. Like, bitch. But uh, yeah. that's, that's all I was missing. <laughs> it's kind of leading up, like playing on the, oh, is he going to hurt his grandparents? Like, what the fuck? Uh, I'll go ahead and the religious dad well, he lost his wife. Hold on. Hold on. But oh. we'll get we'll get back to Tate. You want to get back to Tate? OK. Yeah, we'll, we'll get because uh, like some of the stories uh, like, you know, they, they go quicker than the others. So religious dad, he lost his wife. This is Peach's dad, his daughter, Peaches. Uh, she's dating this kid that she met at church. It seems like their arc might be happy enough. Like, oh, this is the only people that like, oh, this might work out. But then the dad comes home from visiting the wife, her tombstone at the cemetery, and the daughter's got her boyfriend tied up to the bed. Dude, that, I, first of all, when he walked in and that guy was vulnerable and handcuffed, yeah, I, I instantly put myself in his shoes like, dude, that is the shittiest position to be in. I mean, everybody always worried about like getting caught. But can you imagine getting caught by your teenage girlfriend's dad and you're fucking handcuffed naked? Like, oh, my God, I just he, he walks in at the worst time like, like, as soon as she starts sucking the wee wee. But can you imagine she backs up and he is you're just there, dude, fucking vulnerable, just a punching bag. Like, and you can't do anything. You remember what he said when he walked in? Uh, It's not what it looks like. or I didn't mean to. What do you say? like. Oh fuck! <laughs> the dad just the dad just throws the daughter off and starts fucking waylaying on him like, psh, psh, psh. And, and he's like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. That's so funny. Uh, but she now, did it to me. That scene though was, it did a good job of of making me feel like I was in that part because, like I said, like dude, you could almost feel that guy getting hit as if it was you because just him being tied up, man. Like, oh. Anyway, continue. Ugh. Yeah, uh, fuck it. Uh, we we'll get back to Tate real quick. Tate's laying in his race car bed. He's got one of those. He's like fucking uh, uh, Junior from uh, you know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it is Junior, just growing up a little bit. So he's laying there. He's uh, watching a tennis game and decides I'm gonna jack off while choking myself. So he goes and he gets like his grandma's like uh, her robe. He takes the little tie thing out uh, of the sash and ties it around his neck and fucking ties it to the doorknob and just lays in front of the door and jacks off. And we see the whole thing. We see that nut. Dude. What did you think of this scene? <laughs> I, I was kind of rolling my eyes because I knew it was coming at some point. Like if Zach is pitching a movie this hard. Oh, and, you knew it was coming, and, right? Listen, if Zach was pitching a movie this hard and, and Adrian wanted to watch it too that because you let adrian mendoza our listener uh choose i'm like at some point there's going to be some erotic asphyxiation going on in this because zach is obsessed <laughs> with fucking hanging by a fucking <laughs> necktie uh and jerking off he's he's obsessed with it so i was just waiting for it the only reason i haven't tried it yet is because i'm afraid somebody's gonna find me like that and uh yeah like i this movie was this this movie has to have been nc-17 obviously yep okay I, I don't know if this movie's ever had an official release in america Because it's so weird because it's got some actors i've seen in mainstream shit like patrick star for fuck's sake and it's got like the dad i don't know where i've seen that other dad from but it's got people i've seen before 
and yet we've got full frontal jerking off and then ejaculation on camera Mm -hmm. and then that close up of the fucking (laughs) post eruption I'm like and the whole thing is really disturbing just just watching this guy and and looking at his face because it looks like he's really fucking choking himself Mm -hmm. like he's really fucking like he could die like they had probably EMTs and shit on set to make sure you didn't die but like you gotta find a woman that's into like choking you because then if if it gets too heavy she could like wake you up yeah but can you imagine when he signed on to do that role like look we're gonna film you and I, I think it was even it might have even been one cut they might have just been doing a pan with the camera going down it never cut away yeah I was paying attention yeah it was just panning down I'm like so we you're gonna have to do a scene where you really choke yourself with this sash and then you're gonna have to stroke yourself and you're gonna have to think about God knows what whatever gets you off because you're gonna have to come on cue on camera imagine how hard that would be to like have a camera in front of you and have to do that I just, it wouldn't be as like, oh, you couldn't just, you couldn't be with just your intimate thoughts. It'd be like, oh, there's a guy with a camera in front of me. I, I just, I'm pretty sure it was probably a really limited set, close set, mm-hmm. right? It was probably just the director or somebody. Probably. Uh, I don't, yeah, man. I, that would be so fucking, I mean, if that was me, I'd be like, hey, I know you're the director and all, but like, can we get my girlfriend to do the camera just for this one scene? Like, why? That, that to me, I think that'd be more awkward to be doing that. What if his mom was the director? That'd be dumb. But can you imagine? I think honestly, what what would be worse than an open set is just being in that little room with just the guy director. All right, stroke it faster. Like that's kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Like he probably really had to lose himself. Like I'm in. I'm not here right now. I'm doing this. Um, this is uh, like uh, I asked people what they think of Larry Clark. Like I asked, uh, who's the guy that likes horror movies a lot on. Uh, Red Letter Media. I forget his name. I don't know their names at all. I asked him uh, on Twitter, like, oh, what do you guys think of Larry Clark? He's like, oh, he seems like kind of a fucking weirdo, like a creepy guy. And like, yeah, he he kind of gets that reputation because he has scenes like this in his movies. And like, uh, at, at some point, he did a movie called What's Up Rockers about kind of like a similar topic. And the the main kid in that was like 15 at the time. And there's like sexual stuff going on with him. And like, apparently in real life, the kid's mom was kind of like, like a druggie maybe. And like, she wasn't taking care of him and he ended up adopting him, which is like, oh, that's, that seems really nice. But then you you see like the movies and then what he does, it's like, oh man, is he like, is he like a pedophile? Yeah. People are like, they don't know what to think of this guy. He doesn't do a lot of interviews and stuff. I, uh... there's a, there's a bunch of weird shit about him. Like, uh, like the guy that was putting out this movie overseas he, he he like got into a gr- disagreement with them while they were uh like getting ready to put the movie out and beat him up and like he dropped the movie <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of weird stuff about him no you'd have to be fucking nuts man to do this shit <laughs> so move it along with the story after he done fucking made a mess of himself all over his stomach mm-hmm. <laughs> uh then we got fucking uh i guess i'll just go ahead and we'll finish off take uh Tate comes into the kitchen uh, one night naked, eats a slice of pie <laughs> that his do. grandma. Yeah, he eats a slice of pie that his grandma makes for him on special occasions. He says, takes the knife into his grandparents' room, and then uh, gets straddles his grandpa and starts stabbing his grandpa in the fucking neck. His grandma wakes up and uh, immediately says, "Like, uh, uh, Tate, I love you. As if she's like thought of this happening before. Like, mm-hmm. uh, could Tate ever kill me? So you know, right when she wakes up and says that, it's like, oh, it's implying that she's imagined this happen. Yeah, and uh, that he stabs her, and uh, um, he says, when I saw them laying there, I started getting an erection. And he grabs his uh, grandpa's false teeth as he's leaving the room. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> when he put. <laughs> Not only did he put yeah. not only did he put the false teeth on his bottom row of teeth, he put his grandfather's top row of teeth on his bottom teeth. Yeah, it shows him I, the aftermath. He's laying in his race car bed again, oh and he puts the teeth in his mouth and just kind of stares off into space with blood stuff. He's covered in blood. Well, he's recording. He's recording in a little hand recorder yeah, what he, he what he was feeling. And yeah. and he that's one of my favorite in- images in a movie ever is that image of him with the teeth in his mouth. And he's got the blood, dried blood on his face, and yeah, like I said, it's. It's the the large horse top teeth of his grandfather. He's got him on his bottom flipped upside down, so it looks very fucking weird. Um, which we didn't even talk about the grandfather thing when they were playing, uh, what was the game, uh, Scrabble? 
Exactly. I didn't talk about that on purpose because the reason he did that was because his de- his grandpa kept cheating at Scrabble is what he said. And uh, fun fact, th- the word his grandpa tried to play at Scrabble that, that pissed Tate off so much was Sippy. And Sippy actually has an urban dictionary. Uh, yeah, urban. <laughs> it has a definition on the urban dictionary. It says a word that doesn't exist. And then it says... Uh, Tate's grandfather used the non-existent <laughs> word sippy while they were playing a game of Scrabble. Tate showed him who was boss by stabbing the elderly man and his <laughs> interfering wife while he was in the nude. So I have to say, uh, yeah, Tate's arc is by far the best. Um, I, like I said, I can do without the, the unnecessary graphic shit. Like they could have had, to me, they could have had the scene of him doing the uh, erotic asphyxiation without being so graphic to me, it's not fucking necessary. But other than mm-hmm. that, like I like it was creepy. Everything about his every scene he was in was fucking off. And and I'm sure they did this on purpose too to get your brain working and asking, hmm, I wonder. But I would like to see his own movie that explores him because I want to know why does he live with his grandparents, right? You want to know like why does he live with yeah. his grandparents? What did he do to his parents? What's wrong? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it doesn't. We don't know. Did. Did his parents die from an accident and he was never like, uh, you know, it was never put on him or did they just abandon him and he's got issues from that. But it kind of makes mm-hmm. you wonder, like, you don't just do that. You don't. I think they did that on purpose. You don't just give a guy like that. Say, hey, he lives with his grandparents. No one else. We're not going to say anything. It just makes you wonder, like, where the fuck is this guy's fucking parents? The second uh, sippy definition is it's below the hips. Yeah. I got a grandpa. <laughs> my fucking stupid sippy. It's below the hips. I, it's funny how I thought it was really so funny. And angry at him. I thought it was really funny. He's like, you gotta have to. You can't. He's like, you challenge every one of my answers. Like he challenges everything he says. I mean, <laughs> that would be really fucking annoying, man. Yeah. So like, he, he's like, you fucking lose. And then the the grandpa gets up and walks off, and she's like, he's like, Ed, I got a hundred something, uh, you know, points, and, and you got eighty five, so I win because grandpa is a big fucking cheater. He, he takes it so seriously. <laughs> It's like, what the fuck? It's really fucking funny. Now, what was the purpose of that scene where he goes outside and he's sitting with the hopscotchers and talking about it? Now, I guess just to like, yeah, yeah. I mean, subvert because you think like, oh, God, this kid's going to fucking break at some point and kill somebody. And then he goes out and you think like, oh, is he going to take it out on these kids? And then he's just really kind to them. Well, I don't know. I got I was getting creepy vibes from it because like. He wanted, he asked if he can come and watch their cheer practice. These fucking like 10, oh. you know, these like nine year olds. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it could, well, the way they were talking, it implies that they have a friendship. Mm-hmm. Like, he know he knows they're like, oh, hi, you know what? Hi, Tay. Hi. And he's real nice to her. And he's just kind of watching them, which is weird. Dude, he's fucking way older than those fucking little kids. And, um, mm-hmm. and then they're talking about how like, oh, you know, we're doing stuff for our cheer practice. We got to go practice for our cheer. Can I come and watch? Yeah, if you want to. And she's like, kind of like weird about it. Like, come on, dude. I thought I th- he, for somebody to be as weird as he is and murderous as he is, he's probably also a sexual deviant. I mean, I don't think it stops at him jacking off to fucking volleyball players or tennis players. Mm-hmm. I was getting vibes that like, oh, my God, this guy's probably fucking beating it to these little kids somewhere. Mm-hmm. That was that's where my mind. But this at this point, my mind is so fucking tainted from watching this movie. I'm expecting the worst out of every situation. I really am. That's that's how mm-hmm. I was going into it. But yeah, continue. The so, the ending of the peaches thing. Uh, the religious dad for like did she force? Did he force peaches to marry him, or was it like a weird symbolic like promise ring type of thing? It was really confu- confusing. Um, now I didn't know if it was implying that he does that a lot. Yeah, and if it was real or if it's just symbolic, like you said. Um, but you know. I, I don't fucking know, dude. The tension was always really high in the scenes with his dad, right? When even when he came to dinner, the boyfriend and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, let let me see, let me see your teeth. Um, mm-hmm. But I I don't know what the fuck is up with this guy. And I, and I was expect once again expecting the worst. I mean, from the second where it's like, oh, you look so much like your mother. I'm like, okay, knowing this movie already at this point, there's gonna be something fucking sexual with him and his daughter because it looks so much like his dead wife. But I'll just mm-hmm. let it go. Um, and he fucking kissed her and that was really weird. The synopsis implied that she was being sexually abused by him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's my thing. It's like, but the official synopsis, the one that I read, the from, dick one, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't come right out and tell us. We don't see it happen. See, that's the thing. Whenever you see a movie like this, we assume like, Oh, it didn't show it. So it must not happen. Well, think about it. I don't, maybe there, maybe it is because maybe it's implying 
you know how these people that are over sexualized and they get they end up going into sex work and stuff like that because they were molested at a young age mm. and it fucks with the the wiring of your head as you're trying you know you grow naturally and you kind of mature naturally sexually and all that stuff when somebody comes in and and fucks with that it just it fucks up the trajectory of everything so yeah maybe that's why she was overly sexualized because at the beginning of the movie the t- one guy was just saying yeah sometimes she shows us her breasts and she gets naked for us but that that's all they said then at the then right after this, she's marrying her dad, she's having a fucking threesome with these two guys, and they're pounding away. Yeah, the movie ends with a threesome. That's more than just showing showing us her chest every now and again. Like, oh, she fucking goes hardcore with me and my buddy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Continue. But I think she was getting molested. I think she was. I had a history of that. Obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the mom uh, with the shaved head kid, uh, mom gets pissed off at kid after the stepdad tries to blow him while she, while he's asleep. Blew my mind, by the way. Blew my fucking mind. Like I'm I, at first, I'm like, does she not know what he did? And then when he actually said, like, I didn't do anything. I was sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, at first, at first, she's like, oh, you're always provoking him. And then like at the end, she's like, he's like, I didn't do anything. I was asleep. And then it looks like she actually like thinks about it. And that's kind of where we leave off. But 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 her. But wait. Is it the fact that he was asleep that made it okay, or did she not know that he was that she mol- he molested him? Yeah, I, I think he didn't come right out and say it because he was probably just as embarrassed, maybe. Oh, because like, how do you beat the shit out of somebody when you're asleep? It's probably something I don't know, but I or it's just a classic case of a uh, male sympathizer, like a husband sympathizer, right? When they're being abusive, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Either way, it's fucked up. But I feel the worst for that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't feel bad for Tate because he's obviously fought. He needs to be locked up. He's, I feel yeah. I feel bad for Tate's grandparents uh, and his dog, uh, so I don't feel bad for Tate. Um, I feel bad for yeah the fucking guy that's just bullied by his fucking dad and stuff like that. that's got. I know that fucks with you personally. I know how much that fucks with you. But dude, can you imagine like that fucking happening in your sleep, dude? Oh god, <laughs> like I think he was taking it rather well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, obviously, we don't get to see the, the therapy sessions that probably came after the movie ended, but mm-hmm. good lord. No, he he went straight to a gangbang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Continue. So, Sean, he's eating with his girlfriend and girlfriend's mom that he's cheating and the dad that the, the mom's cheating on with. And uh, they're, uh, uh, yeah, they, it just kind of ends with them like, oh, yeah, everything's cool. Like, the dad's really cool with the with Sean and everything. And, yeah, we were both opening like, oh, that would be great if the little girl was like, Daddy, why does Sean come over when my big sister and mom uh, just hang out in my mom's room and I, I hear her moan like that or something? That would be hilarious. Yeah. That would have been a great ending to that one. I just. But I guess it, I guess it's uh, even more sad that it keeps going on because, like, yeah, the dad seems nice. And I'm having a hard time really getting the theme of the movie just because if you take out Tate, I would have assumed, okay, clearly the theme is uh, sexual and sexualizing youth and and, and the fucking impact it has. Right. And and, and Mm -hmm. probably the forever impact, because that's the theme with all the other three. I think I picked up on kind of what the movie's hinting at this time around. I'll get to it. Okay. Uh, we, we, We cut to Tate getting arrested. And then uh, it ends with a three way. Uh, but then the, they're they're sitting there after the three way, and they're just talking back and forth. They're playing like a game where they're like, "Who am I?" And then they ask questions. Twenty questions. Like, oh, do you, yeah. Yeah. Do you live around here? And he's like, "Yeah." It ends up being their friend Ken Park that was touched on at the beginning of the movie, and it kind of ends with the question like, "Huh? If their lives were like this fucked up, what was his life like that he killed himself?" And then it kind of see. I, I I always thought like. Or this time, I was—I always forget the ending because it kind of it gives you kind of a little hint. I think they could have just left it completely uh, out of like just like oh, what was his life like? But like the scene they do give us is like he basically uh, he finds out that uh, his girlfriend's pregnant, and then we get a scene where they're sitting there, and he's like, "Oh, you gonna you gonna keep it?" She's like, "I, I guess I don't want to be a baby killer." And she looks at him and goes, "Aren't you glad your mom didn't abort you?" And then he just kind of sits there for a while as if like, uh, no, not really. And then the, the movie ends. Yeah, I don't think uh, that last scene with him and that exposition did did the the real ending as far as we're concerned service. Like I think it I think it does. It's a little bit better of an ending of just kind of the what if, like what was his life like type of thing. And even then though, we can still imagine like what beside like that that's just one of the things. Yeah. But yeah, he's like, oh my life is like uh yeah, I kinda do wish my mom 
would have aborted me. So. And I get it. And I get it. All these kids are Ken Park. Uh, yeah. I get it. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Tate. Tate. It's it's funny how Tate's kind of the outlier because he's the only one that's not overtly sexual. I mean, obviously he's a sexual pervert, but really he's just fucking up. He's insane. He's just he, yeah. The 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 last uh, three way. Uh, if Tate's uh, already been, you know, he went to jail. So uh, assuming he, if he didn't, he would be there too. <laughs> Which is creepy to think. Is that, like, is, that, that it, is that what they said? I mean, it, it implies it because they're all friends that hang out. Yeah. And did they did they acknowledge that he got arrested, or they didn't know yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. While they're playing twenty questions, they're like, "Oh, are you Tate?" And he's like, uh, "No, I'm." He's he's like, "I'm not here anymore." She goes, "Oh, you're Tate." And he's like, "No, I'm not here, as in I'm not alive anymore." Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. Um, but yeah, he's the weird outlier because the other three are just all connected to some weird perversion, abuse, sexual stuff. And then, so uh, yeah, the Tate thing is kind of this weird outlier. So I don't really know. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's why he's living with his grandparents. Maybe he was molested by his uh, real parents. I don't know. Like I said, if you take Tate out, I'm like, okay, I could start to get the underlying themes going on here. But now that you have Tate, I'm like, okay, well, Tate's just fucking Tate's the abuser. Like, where's Tate's abuse? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because everybody else is abused. Mm-hmm. And even even the guy that seemingly is having a great time fucking his girlfriend's mom, he's being abused. Tate's not. His grandparents are nice. She's making him sandwiches and they're playing board games. And Tate's the abuser. So that's yeah. You think that's just uh, an oversight on their part writing it? Or you think there's something to that, that he was the only one of the kids that was an abuser himself? The rest of them were abused. It, yeah, it could be leaving it open like, oh, was he abused before he was living with? Yeah, he, it's hard telling. But yeah, maybe that's also why it's the most interesting, because he does stand out the most, because he's the only one that fucking is the devil. Um, mm-hmm. the rest of them you feel bad for. You don't really feel bad for Tate. He's <laughs> like, I I don't know. Even though he's the most interesting one. Yeah, he's the most interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, he's the most interesting once again because he's different. The other three, by nature, are not going to be quite as interesting because they all have something in common. There's three of them that are somewhat tied. Um, mm-hmm. So what did you think of this movie? Did you I, hate it? I want to ask your opinion and your rating first, actually. I want to know. I give it an eight, baby. An eight. Okay. I mm-hmm. cheated and I looked on your letterbox and you gave it a nine. Um, oh, did I? Yeah. And that's after I rated it. I rated my, I rated it and everything else. Um, but regardless, you really liked the movie. Um, mm-hmm. I, by default, the way I work is if a movie doesn't bore me and I, and I'm actively engaged in it and it's got a fast pace by default, it's already starting at a five, right? Like to mm-hmm. me, it's not going to be lower than a five. You have to be, you have to fucking bore me and I have to tune out of you um, to be below that. Uh, and I think I'm staying at a five and, and I'm giving it, okay. I'm giving it a five because yeah, it didn't, I was, I was into it. Like, I mean like, I'm not into it, but I was like, I, I can't look away. It was like happiness. Um, I think I liked happiness a little more, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it's like, I can't, I can't give it less than a five because like I said, every scene had something going for it. There wasn't a filler scene. Happiness had a little bit more, filler into it right a little bit more that is a way it was over two hours this one's and there was like some scenes hour. that you could have got rid of in happiness like we talked about yeah this one was an hour and a half and it was it was tight and and everybody uh i i felt had equal weight and everybody every character's arc had equal importance um i don't know why i'm not giving it more than a five probably because it's just not my kind of movie <laughs> it's just a shock value movie like okay i don't really get what the overall theme is at the end of the day i'm like i kind of get it like there's a superficial theme here i get it kids mm-hmm. you know whatever but like at the end of the day i'm like i don't really have much takeaway other than that and it's, it was kind of looked at as an, a companion piece to kids when it came out it, it seemed way more exploitive in nature though to me uh i don't know like yeah i, I ask myself why sometimes like when, when you're trying to do a certain scene like, did we really have to see that? Did it really have to go that far? Did it really have to do this? Or do people do it just for the pure sake of shock factor? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It's they just want to make you uncomfortable to me. Um, when a movie like this movie, this, the where it shined is when it made me feel uncomfortable. And I think it was for legit reasons. Like when that when the dad comes in and the kid's fucking handcuffed, I felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And it was, and, and at that point, it wasn't perverse or anything. It was just, it was raw. Um, and I felt generally uncomfortable when I knew that dad was going to come home and fucking do something. Um, mm-hmm. But like, I, I feel like it was a bit. Uh, uh, what's the word I want? 
uh, gratuitous to just be stuck on the guy jacking off in, in the closet and, and, and having have have that be as graphic as it was. Like, what's the real point there? Mm-hmm. I that, That's just my opinion. I think it was just one of these movies that wanted to go to 11. <laughs> it's like uh, that movie uh, Thriller, A Cruel Picture. Never saw it. Where uh, it's basically an exploitation movie about a girl that wears an eye patch, which is where uh, uh, what's his name got the idea for uh, Kill Bill. But like, yeah, they originally uh, made the movie and then after the fact went in and and shot like real insertion scenes for the sex scenes. Mm -hmm. And it's using like a body double for those scenes. And apparently like the star of the movie had no idea that was going to happen. So she took her parents to watch the movie at the premiere. And like when that happened, like they all freaked out. And like, yeah, there's two cuts of that movie. One where like there's none of that. And then one with the with those scenes in there. So, yeah, they if they made a movie like a version of this with all that stuff cut out. Yeah, who knows? A part of me feels like I'm being unfair giving it a five because I think I don't know because I've given other movies fives when they're just kind of whatever, um, you know, not bad, not good. Like this, this engaged me enough. I, I think I'm never gonna watch it again, and I, I think I just have to dock it for it just being too. It's too filthy. It's too far. It's an unnecessary, though. It's what I'm saying. See, I was hoping you had like a, a really strong reaction either way. Like you either hated it or no, loved. no, 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 no. Like it, it has more good than bad. I think that's why I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck. Maybe a five isn't quite fair enough, type of thing. But I just, I like I said, there's scenes where it does it right, but then there's mm-hmm. some scenes where I'm like, this is just doing it for the sake to shock. I guess I, you know, um, it definitely is. Yeah, some of it seems gratuitous. Some of, like I said, there's certain scenes where I'm like. I mean, like I said, the dad was the dad scene was freaky enough the way they did it. It was perfect. And and it was insinuated enough. They didn't take it far. They didn't have to, because by the point where the dad is getting kicked off of the guy, the kid, right, he kicks him off and all that stuff. At that point, my mind's already running wild with what could have happened or was going to happen. Right. And that's mm-hmm, just my yeah. opinion. Um, <laughs> and like I said, I'm really just kind of picking on the um, I think I'm really just picking on the the, the choking scene. That's really the main one. Like, I think that was just like a little unnecessary. Yeah, see, I, I, I wish I knew, like, there's not a lot of trivia about it. Like, uh, how did they shoot that scene? What the actor think? I'd love to hear, like, a commentary now, like them going back and all watching it in a room and like, what the fuck were we thinking filming this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the, the, with the dad fucking pissing, I get it. Um, you could easily, you could easily do something else with that scene or you could have not had it all, but. He, there, he had to have been doing something to build the, the tension and what was going to happen, right? It just made it feel more real. Yeah. Like a dog. Like, you don't see this in movies. Yeah. And so I, I kind of understood that. And yeah, I mean, honestly, it would have been just as effective if they panned up and they weren't showing his cock. But that, you know, yeah, that was almost kind of gratuitous, too. We get a great scene with him drinking the beer and then the camera zooms down. And shows this. And then we see it coming out of his dick at the same time. To me, that's an example of gratuitous. It, it Before the, the pan down, it was fine, even with the dick there because like i said it was building this weird tension of like okay if this guy really came home drunk and he was about to fucking abuse somebody he's probably gonna go fucking take a leak and it's that slow build so in that was fine but yeah just even in that moment just the the pan down and the close-up on the dick like is that that's not necessary Mm -hmm. i can still tell what his fucking dick looked like standing in full (laughs) frame (laughs) i can see the stream uh did you watch this on internet or like the copy i sent you look like uh you sent me a a picture of the this asphyxiation scene and it looked like there was like a a tv thing on there yeah i i found a place that was streaming it because it was it was making me download it and i'm just afraid to download anything anymore because i got two new p i got a new pc that's untainted and i got a new laptop and it's just I'm afraid of catching fucking malware and shit, man. Not that you have bad yeah. shit, but if I can stream it, I I will. Uh, yeah, I just I ripped it right from my DVD. Oh, see, I wish you would have told me that. Then I would have been I would have felt comfortable. Um, yeah. So this this is uh yeah this isn't available in HD no Blu-ray this one and yeah like it shows the shit like uh it, it, hard penis and all this shit so yeah like uh, watch at your own uh, fucking uh, you know like yeah it's on the internet you can find it like Aaron did so if you want to hear see what it's all about go ahead baby I I literally not for kids though I literally just typed the title of the movie and streaming and it was like F movies or something right Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah so like I said I'm going to stick with a five but like I said there's a part of me that feels like I'm being unfair to it because there's 
there's some scenes that are really fucking good about it. Um, like a sex usually means like, oh yeah, this is good for a rent. Like watch it one time at least. And like a seven's like, yeah, I'd buy this for like, you know, 10 bucks. So something. here's what I say. If, I mean, I don't want to get into point fives and, and decimal points because that's just too fucking convoluted and, and crazy to think about. But literally five to me means in the middle of the road, I could take it or leave it. You know, I, I wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't particularly great. I, I think this was I like I think I think this had more good than bad going for it, of course. So I think if you really were going to put a decibel, it would be five point something. I'll just say that. But yeah, we're going to call it a five. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 like happiness to where it's worth a watch. I probably won't watch it again. And if I ever did, it would be with somebody else because I'd want to subject them to it. And I want like Zach wants. I want the raw emotion. I want to see somebody's reaction to that shit. Um, but uh, I do kind of think happiness was a little more shocking, though. Mm-hmm. And a, a better movie for that. Like, just I don't think you can out creep that whole scene with his dad relating to him about fucking kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's just to me the benchmark of fucking creepy scenes. Mm-hmm. But that's all we got, man. You got anything else to add, or are you gonna close up? Did you not want to do uh, comments? Oh fuck, I forgot. My bad. We didn't read them last time, did we? All right, really quick. Uh, we didn't get around to it last time, I don't think, but we're going to go ahead and read some questions from the last uh, Cinema Enema. Uh, going over the different episodes, of course. Uh, Will and Matt's Excellent Podcast writes, uh, this is on our Wicker Man episode. Everyone knows about the Wicker Man solely because of the remake and Nick Cage's antics. I'll need to track down the original whenever I get the time. As for the Halloween news, honestly, I could care less. Uh, the third one might be called Halloween Ends, but Michael's going to come back again and again and again. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to see. Uh, I wanted to, do, like, uh, see, I'm thinking about just fucking making my uh, one of my picks uh, Midsummer so that we can because I, I talked about it on the Wicker Man. And I was like, oh, I, I might give it a little review. But then because you didn't see it, I was like, OK, I won't do it. So, yeah, I think I'm going to. But not the next one, because I know what the next one's going to be. I want to do a uh, fucking uh, uh, Coffin Joe. Oh, in uh, tribute. Yeah, because we didn't get, we didn't give a shout out. Coffin Joe passed away this past week as of this recording. R.I.P. Hell yeah. My favorite Coffin Joe was the second movie, but uh, I, I don't remember if you could go into the second movie without seeing the first one. So I'll probably just do the first. one. Yeah, no, I'd be 100 percent down with that. Uh, and yeah, we didn't even touch on this when we were talking about the news, but I think that's also more Blumhouse shit. They finished wrapping Halloween Kills. So uh, I don't think they finished Halloween ends. They just finished Halloween Kills and it's wrapped. Um, so that shit will probably be out this Halloween. You know, they knock out those horror movies pretty quick. Um, and of course the people behind the scenes saying it's really wicked, but of course they're going to fucking say that it's the wicked shit. You get you fucking rolling with the hatchet. But, See, that's what the ICPs always say, <laughs> but who knows, man, my, my issues with the first one, maybe once they got the reestablishment and the connecting of the first movie out of the way, maybe the second one, they're really free to kind of fucking really do whatever they want. Maybe it is going to be like super wacky and original. You know what would be amazing is if after all that, like, you know, retconning, they're like, they just write it that they're brother and sister again. That would be fucking <laughs> troll 9000. Uh, Angel Heart Cinema Enema, Adrian Mendoza. Uh, Adrian requested this episode of Ken Park. He states, I want to like Blade Runner 2049. 2049. I need to watch it again. I've seen the crying game several times and you're never ready to see that dude's big black cock. Hell yeah. A pretty good movie to watch at your leisure is a film that came out a few years ago called The Guest. Um, I watched Dial Code Santa Claus as well last month and thought it was pretty good. I'm honored to be the one to choose the next month's Cinema Enema. I choose Ken Park. Okay, so we did Ken Park. Um, when I was watching freaking the crying game also, I noticed like whenever it showed his cock, I, I realized after I saw it, like, holy shit, my mouth's open. I don't remember opening it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and on the topic of uh, Blade Runner 2049, man, so it seems like we're backwards. That's how I feel about the original Blade Runner. The, you know, his- yeah, see, we've all been there. We've all been like, oh, yeah, this movie that I want to like. Everybody likes it, but I just, I'm just not getting it. So, yeah, there's nothing, nothing no big deal, Adrian. You don't got to. Yeah, we're, we're all going to like different movies. And, yeah, I've been there, too. We've all got those movies. But that's funny. That's exactly the opposite. Of how, that's how I feel about the original Blade Runner. And I really loved the, the 2049. So, but yeah, man, mm-hmm. give it another spin. Maybe it's at least like the original Blade Runner for me where. You might not quite grasp it, but there's something about it that makes you maybe want to revisit it later just to see if you missed something. Uh, and I'll probably do that mm-hmm. with the original. I'm pretty sure I'll see the, the original Blade Runner again in my lifetime. 
director of the final cut was just added to netflix there you go see i'd, I'd like to watch like the theatrical cut and all the other cuts yeah me too um well i i think the first time i saw blade runner was the theatrical cut to be fair but mm-hmm. i it's been too long uh anyway so thanks adrian for that and thanks for the recommendation this this month uh, angel heart as well will and matt is back and they say note this message is from william lowry Good to see Cinema Anima back. I've known about Angel Heart for quite a while, so I'll have to check it out soon. Y'all mentioned Dolomite is my name, but I was wondering, have either Aaron or Zach seen Ed Wood, which was written by the same people who wrote Dolomite? I'm asking because I'd like to do a Cinema Anima episode on it and y'all at some point this year. Uh, I'm a fan of the film and the person it's about. So yeah, Ed Wood for Cinema Anima. Oh yeah, we could do that for bio-sploitation. Bio exploitation. Yeah, that's a good point. I've actually never seen uh, Ed Wood. There have been points in time where I've sought it out to watch it because I'm like, I finally want to watch that fucking movie. Because to a lot of people, it's it's the last good Tim Burton. You know, like it's riding mm-hmm. on that line before he went full on fucking Disney. Um, and uh, and obviously, it's supposed to be really really good. And I, and I remember every time that I tried to obtain it, this was you know I think a time or two it was pre streaming, so I couldn't like find it online. Um, I couldn't find physical copies. It was just hard to find for a little while. Um, and I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of keeps missing the boat with me. But I eventually want to watch it. The first second it's on Netflix or something, I will fucking watch it. Because it's just one of those long overdue why wills that has just constantly slipped through my fingers. And I've never seen it. Have you? Yeah, I've seen it a while back. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that it had the same writer as the Dolomite is my name. Mm-hmm. Did you? I didn't know that. I didn't. So that's cool. Like, hey, I mean... Hey, you know that thing you guys did really great the first time? Do it again. This time for this movie. No, it's cool, man. I like Dolomite, so yeah, I I, I probably will really like it. Um, and I and if it's anything, if it feels like old Tim Burton, I'll probably like it. So, mm-hmm. I I love Beetlejuice, man. Oh yeah. I, I part of me wishes he just would have died in a fiery fucking wreck after Beetlejuice, and that was his legacy. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. But Beetlejuice is great. Like I. I I kind of hate to think about uh, what Tim Burton kind of became because he's so watered down now, right? Mm-hmm. Doing all his Disney movies. He did the, what's it called? The Alice in Wonderland movies. He did the Dumbo movie. The remake of fucking Planet of the Apes. It really all, I mean, like there's l- little bits of, of Tim Burton-ism in there, but it's so watered down. It's Tim Burton light and it's not really. And I just, and it's so weird because this is the guy that compromised Batman 1 to really make Batman returns his own. And he made that fucking Tim Burton on crack. So there's a really funny story on uh, an evening with Kevin Smith about Kevin Smith getting into a fight with Tim Burton. <laughs> Tell us uh, I, like uh, back whenever. Uh, so before Jay and Silent Bob strike back was a movie, it was like, a, there was like a little, uh, it was basically a sequel to uh, mall rats. Remember how at the end of mall rats, it shows the monkey and it says, Oh, that's, that's a different story. Well, they made like a, a little like continuation of Jay and Silent Bob with the monkey in the comic book form. And like, it, it basically got redone in Jay and Silent Bob strike back that whole, like kind of like, uh, there was a part in it where the, he was imagining what it'd be like if the monkeys ruled the world. And it was basically just like a, a big lampooning of Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it ended with like, uh, in the comic book, it's not in the movie. Uh, it ended with like uh, them taking the the head off the Lincoln Monument and replacing it with a, a chimp's head. So when he saw the remake of, uh, of, of the movie that, you know, fucking uh, Mark Wahlberg was in. That's how it ended was he goes back to earth and uh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. So then like, he's like, they ripped me off. He he was basically joking around with a buddy of his, they were doing an interview in written form. And he's like, uh, yeah, did you notice that? And he's like, yeah, fucking great minds think alike. And he's like, oh, well I gotta, I can write a piece on this. He's like, Oh, let's do it. And he's like, yeah, I've got to, I'll have to get Tim, Tim Burton's comment. He's like, Oh, get Tim on the phone. It'll be fun. So while they're doing it, they're laughing back and forth. They're like, yeah, I feel ripped off. He, 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 and stuff like that. But yeah, whenever you read it, it doesn't come off like that. It's like, he feels very ripped off. He is thinking about legal action. So basically whenever it's printed, he's like, man, uh, this, this was supposed to be funny. This was funny to me and you. Why'd you write it like this? And he's like, I just wrote the way we said it. And like, basically, uh, <laughs> Tim Burton reads it and he's like, fucking, uh, originally he was just like, uh, I would never, he said something originally, but then like later on, he, he kind of took the gloves off and he was getting really pissed off about it. He's like, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck Kevin Smith. Like anybody that knows me knows I would never read a comic book. 
And then uh, like the audience kind of laughs and then uh, Kevin Smith goes and to me that completely explains the original Batman. So it was kind of a funny joke. Kind of I've, I've heard I've heard the punch. He's used that punchline many times. Like he's kind of <laughs> he's kind of recapped that story, I think, but gave, <laughs> gave him the short end. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it blows me away, though, going back to what I was saying, that this is a guy you would have thought he would have compromised on Batman Returns. Like, no, mm-hmm. he, he went full Tim Burton for a Batman movie who knew that fucking 10, 15 years later, he was going to be watering himself down. I mean, and not I, because I mean, a Planet of the Apes full blown Beale juice infused would have been fucking kind of weird and cool. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. It's like no one would have thought like, hey, Beale juice mixed with Batman. Like that doesn't sound like it works. That's like oil and water, but it was fucking awesome. So mm-hmm. I kind of wish he would have kept that going and really just kind of kept his personality. I actually like ripped all the audio from an evening with Kevin Smith and I made like a CD audio version of it. Mm-hmm. I could send you that. It's really funny. Yeah, no. Yeah. There's some really good stories on. Yeah. Put in the box or something. I would I would listen to it. There's there's a print story that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, no, I would totally check it out. Uh, Feline Fatale comments it on Blade Runner. Uh, she, she says Blade Runner twenty forty nine is a cinematic masterpiece. I agree. Uh, the new Pet Cemetery had the worst spoiler trailer. Uh, that new twist was shit. Anyways, hated in all caps. Mm-hmm. The remake. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was substandard, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, uh, Feline Fatale. We appreciate your comments as always. Happiness Cinema Enema. Um, ER, listener by the name of ER, simply that, says, first clip, how I flirt. Hell yeah. The, when he's calling her. He's like, I'll fuck you through your head. I can't, I don't remember the, the monologue. I'm going to fuck you so bad, you're going to be coming through your ear. <laughs> Uh, the Wicker Man, uh, Adrian Mendoza, you uh, you commented that the music in The Wicker Man is great. I really liked it too. I, I like I I really like the original Wicker Man. That's a movie I'd, I'd love to own. Um, mm-hmm. Adrian Mendoza, you also elaborate and you say, "Here's a quick video on folk horror. Check it out. It's really good." He leaves a link in the comments there for people to check out. Midsummer does not have the same horror jolt as Hereditary, but there are some shocking moments, and it does have a dark humor that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the full frontal male nudity. The ginger dude has beautiful cock and balls, uh, but I was surprised how dark they were compared to the rest of his body. Okay. One, re- I don't know what you're talking about yet because I haven't seen it. One review described Midsummer, he says, as more in line with the works of Todd Salons, uh, which I agree. Happiness, right? Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but the movie to me goes nowhere. Uh, there are some great scenes, but none of them connect to make a great movie. The movie makes you want to go to L.A. and hang out, lie on a beach, smoke some grass, listen to some groovy tunes, and eat Mexican food. Uh, but ultimately, the film is shallow, and the two protagonists are whiny man children. But I will definitely watch it again. I just learned about the film Under the Silver Lake a few weeks ago. I will definitely check it out. Weird fucking movie. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, uh, for the comments. And we'll make sure to uh, read any comments you guys drop. Uh, keep them coming on, on the next Cinematum as well. Hell yeah. All right, so uh, thank you guys for joining us for another edition of Cinema Enema. want to always remind you guys, uh, if you guys are watching this uh, on YouTube, that's great. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, share us with everybody you know, especially people that are going to like Ken Park or do like Ken Park. And uh, if you guys aren't already there, in the links below the YouTube videos, uh, are, it'll direct you to the podcast services. We're on all of them, you know, Apple or Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify. Um, go over there and leave us a rating uh, or review all that stuff. A five star rating over there on any of those places is going to help us out a lot. Even if you prefer to hang out with us on YouTube for the most part, that shit is like gold over there in podcast world because it helps us gain exposure and move up the ladder and uh, basically gain some reach to more people that are going to like us uh, or be into the shit we do. So, you know, you guys all want brothers and sisters to join the family, right? Uh, and other than that, I'm going to say it one last time as well. Uh, Zach and I just started a Patreon. If you guys want some additional perks while supporting the channel, uh, check it out. We've got that shit linked uh, everywhere. It should be in the YouTube videos below. It should be uh, in the descriptions of the podcast services if that's where you're listening to us as well. Um, yeah, that's that's all we got from now. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess it's my choice next. Hell yeah. I better start thinking what I'm going to do. Oh, by the way, I don't know if uh, really quick on the Patreon thing. I don't know if we should maybe we can make that a perk, too, or if we should keep cinema animal like that where it's our choices or eventually let people decide. Because one of the things on the Patreon we want to do is um, so if you're somebody that is receiving the exclusive podcast that we do, uh, you you get to 
vote on what we're going to do for that. Uh, but also by default, I think Zach, what Zach and I are going to do is we're going to start putting out our little short list of flicks, whether they're requests or they can still come from you guys. We want you guys to still request shit for the BTM commentary. Um, but we're going to ultimately make up our short list, which is what we always do behind the scenes anyway. And then we're going to let you guys decide. We're going to give the patrons uh, the voting op. Are you cool with that, Zach? Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Why not? I mean, it's our short list. We always just fucking make that list and we throw fucking dart at it and just we'll see which one we land on. Uh, that'll be something we'll let you guys choose as well. Um, so anyway, that's all we got, guys. Until next time. Bye bye, puppets. Adios. Adults are like using sex in the most inappropriate, abusive way. They're using uh, uh, sex to satisfy their own emotional needs, their own needs, um, uh, and they're using their kids, um, which is which is really wrong, you know. And and uh, uh, kids who have been abused uh, um, uh, and really fuck with this way uh, usually. At the end of the film, they're going to be just like total, you know, you know, basket cases. They're going to be, you know, so, you know, you know, no hope, no future, you know, totally devastated. I wanted, I wanted to show that these kids will survive or have a good chance at survival. Uh, and and the last last scene in the movie um, is about that. It's about uh, 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 they have each other and they connect to each other and they're connecting through sex in the best way, in the most innocent, pure way, um, to each other. And they're talking about their dreams and their hopes, and they're talking about uh, utopian societies. And they're making love to each other in, in the most beautiful way. And, uh, uh, and I thought that this is the way the film should end, and I thought that this is the way to have an uplifting end ending to show that uh, maybe these kids will be okay because they have each other um, um, after what uh, has happened to them, you know, you know, with their parents, and um, um, that was that was my plan, that was my idea, and I and I think it works. I mean, I, I but uh, but I mean, those are just two scenes through the film. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of other other scenes in the film, and I think everything. I mean, I th I think everything. Um, um, you know, blends together. I, I mean, it's part of the work. They're not just uh, thrown in there just to have a sex scene. Obviously, as as you say, it works. I mean, it's part of uh, part of uh, work. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur.